imagine at any school site with children present that's not possible to happen um, because um, if whether it's at recess or at um, or or in the cafeteria in the multi-purpose room you're not able to do that even if you stop having assemblies you still have to have them way closer to that. she turned it up in here. Turn it up to full volume. confirming that people can hear. Um, we have it at full volume at this point. Turn down the static, um, so hopefully you'll be able to hear it. 
receiving 
the text with the link and then we are receiving we are also doing it by voice message as well so we're doing all three um, for other purposes we had started the testing of the texting feature um, which we now can do with synergy and school and school messenger and um, so we do have that um, one thing that I want to highlight in terms of, um, of the food services is, is we are required to provide food services for our students. So there will be 16 locations where people, students will be able to get free bag breakfast and lunch. It is available to any child in the community. They don't have to be a student. So this is very similar to the summer program that we do. Legally, it should be from one year to 18 years old. Um, and so we are not going to be partying people. Um, but if someone obviously looks older than 18, we are not technically allowed to provide them with that. In order to implement social distancing for this as well, we have two different ways in which we are going to do it. Um, we are do using the drive-through process, um, which Elk Grove is using. We recognize that some um, families have only one car, some have none, but some only have one car, and that may be used for employment purposes. And so because of that, we also do have a walk-up um, manner as well. Um, that they can do. We will be implementing the same protocols for social distancing there that Second Harvest Food Bank is doing currently. Um, so they have a process that they are implementing that the health department helped them with and we will continue to do that. Um, and um, there is the times and dates um, uh, on the flyer and that, that, is, um, that is everywhere for you. Um, in terms of the MOU and the information, I just want to highlight two areas and then I will stop. Um, so one is in terms of um, the sick, um, the sick leave and the quarantining. So um, we are asking people who are um, sick to stay home. Um, they have protections not only under the regular contract. So this is an extension of the current contract and then there's some amplification of it. Um, but they have protection, so we are asking staff um, to stay home. When we do have an active case, in the case of Rio de Mar, they have been home, um, and they have not been on site as we deep clean the site. That, um, that staff will continue to do so as well. Um, this upcoming year, I'm mean, sorry, upcoming week. Um, in addition, we do have one additional staff member at another site who is um, currently being tested and so that's, that staff as well um, will not be at the site um, because the safety of, the, of everyone is, is extremely important to me and I know it is extremely important to you. I think the challenge that we have is the fact that we must, we must together create weeks worth of curriculum and instruction that we will not have additional time for preparation. So this will be our time for preparation. And so um, whether it is being in the classroom to gather all the materials and figure out what is going to happen, if we thought that this was just for a week, there would not be this level of concern because it would be, well, for a week, child can do whatever a child needs to do, but we're talking about multiple weeks, which when we talk with frequently when we're talking about curriculum development, there's a big push and a big focus on collaboration and really working together as a team because the teams have different strengths. And so in terms of this, this would allow the three days, would allow the to, if they need to, they can practice social distancing so they could do similar to what we're doing here, but still work off of each other and work smartly because we're not talking about generating one week of support. We're talking about multiple weeks, which means you have to really think through what does a student need to learn for the rest of second grade? What does a 
asking you to learn for the rest of you as a student. And you need to have that time in order to do it. So we had made an agreement in the MOU um, that um, certificated staff, so I want you to know that this is happening everywhere. So long distance learning, if you look every single school district that has gone on dismissal or on closure is doing long distance learning. So this isn't a Dr. Rodriguez thing or Michelle thing or a PPUS thing. This is, we are going to be required to do distance learning. And in all cases, they are banding together. Um, we, so all the superintendents in the 10 districts just, um, agreed because of the need to make sure that there's a good sequence that we would have staff present on for this first week. When I met with um, CSEA and PBFT in an effort to support staff and to support the fact that many art teachers are very much ahead because they already use Google Classroom, they already use a lot of online materials, um, then we determined that they would only have to be on site um, in to, for the first three days and then um, they could begin remotely March, March 19th if preparations were completed, if their own preparations were completed for distance learning. So we are not asking people to go if they are sick. We are, they have sec security in that. We ask them to stay home, to do that. But we do know that we need to group together and, um, and help solve this problem together. Agenda item 2.1, approval of agenda. Approval. All Second. in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. 3.1, review and discussion of COVID-19 district protocols. I'm not sure if we're going to start off with
Yet I watch the news and there are buildings being disinfected by people in full hazmat suits. This makes no sense to our children, and we explain. You can't go to school because of germs, but you can come to mommy's closed school and help me plan lessons. Almost done. My personal doctor has not returned my email. I've been out sick the last two days, the last two sick days I have for the year. This past week, I have hugged two people multiple times who are now in quarantine. I have a chest cough and no fever, so do not qualify for testing. This per an ER nurse friend's exam. So I hope everyone is all right with me using the bathroom and the coffee machine at Rolling Hills Middle School and at the Towers. Um, thank you. Thank you. Very thank much. you. So first of all, I do want to thank Dr. Rodriguez for being willing to give us the two days as we did um, negotiate next week. The, so the issue that comes up from that is that like, now we have teachers who are being tested on other sites. And one of the challenges is that some of those sites that are now closed So we have um, now a potential that this week we'll start potentially hearing from other sites where a teacher from Rio or any other site that has a teacher that has te is being tested for COVID. Um, it's, it's that spread. Um, <laughs> EFT has, our teachers, we don't have a problem with them. Nobody's trying to skirt their job duties, but it's it, and it is the fear right now. There is that the social fear right now of contracting COVID. So teachers, we're able to plan via Google, Google Hangout. We do Zoom meetings. We do phone conferences. So you can still collaborate with your team online. It, it doesn't have to be in person. And, and so the viability of, of taking a child to school, to a school site, is, is that um, minimized so that you know, our, our teachers can go home and they can go home and our out students can still receive the education.
All right. So I'm going to try to reposition my microphone so that I can. I hope this email finds everyone well under these unfortunate circumstances. I'd like to thank the Santa Cruz County Office of Education for making the decision to cancel classes next week for all our students in this community. However, I am appalled that we as staff still have to show up to work. I know that it was said in Michelle Rodriguez's email that ill staff should stay home and some don't unfortunately. Furthermore, spreading the virus, even though it may not be COVID-19, we are still susceptible to getting it from your customer as such so. Some may be carriers that don't necessarily possess all symptoms and should be around and be around if you compromised people such as myself and still spread it. Making the decision for staff members to show up to work ridiculous when we should be limiting our time around others. This decision is uncalled for and I only hope it doesn't happen. Thank you. 
from Talia Hernandez. Hello, I am a biology teacher at Pajaro Valley High School and I have some questions and concerns regarding Michelle Rodriguez's email to the PUSD staff and their expected responsibilities for the week of March 16th to 20th. In her email, she says during this time, the staff will continue to be at their work sites, will continue to be paid, and will not see a change in their base pay and health and welfare benefits. Certificated staff will prepare for the development of distance learning resources to ensure continuity of learning if it becomes necessary to be closed for additional weeks. Am I correct in interpreting that as teachers need to be on site in our rooms preparing materials for distance learning? I thought that the point of closing schools was to limit exposure to each other and allow for a deep cleaning of the site. How is a deep cleaning possible when I am in my room? How is being on campus with other teachers and staff limiting exposure? Her email also says that on a case-by-case -case basis, all employees may bring their own children to work during the closure. The children can be supervised in a safe environment and maintain social distancing protocols. Does having those children here not also decrease the effectiveness and productivity of other staff? And I would imagine the kids being here also puts them at risk of exposure to the cleaning chemicals which are purposefully used when students are not present. Are we truly expected to be here next week to prepare for distance learning when we as staff could be preparing for distance learning at our own distance in our homes? I am also strongly objecting to being asked to be here during a shutdown for public safety. Is that being heard better? Melissa Weber. Dear Dr. Rodriguez and Board of Trustees, if it is not safe, safe for students to come to school, then it is not safe for any of us to be. The health and safety of your employees should be the utmost priority during this health pandemic. As of this morning, Maryland, Michigan, New Mexico, Ohio, Oregon, and the District of Columbia have announced that schools in their states will be closed for several weeks amid concerns about the coronavirus. LAUSD and San Diego Unified are also closing. Following their example, make the right decision and show us that you can. As a reminder, many have already been exposed to the virus through one of our schools. From Monica Gauthier. I wanted to send a quick note to let you know that we as parents and as medical professionals in the community need the schools closed longer. As a nurse herself, I'm sure you understand why. We need to be on top of this and stop this from spreading like wildfire, wildfire and overwhelming my ER work family. Julie Valens. I would like to request that we as PVOSD staff are able to work from home rather than come to the sites next week. I personally will be finishing report cards and planning future lessons. I will also be communicating with families because I am, I am having my students create their own independent study plans today. It's logical that all this can be done from home. Other professionals in the communities are able to have work from home days. It just makes sense. I can assure you that I take my role very seriously. I would like to be trusted as a professional to work from home in order to be with my kids and also to actually be part of the social distancing. Why are you putting our health at risk by having us come to campus for no real reason? 
Is there a plan to make sure that the students in our district have access to internet? Because we do need to rely on distance education in the near term. This stuff is difficult, difficult, but sensible decisions need to be made by our leaders in this uncertain time. I'm not feeling very confident in the district's lead in response thus far. Thank you for your consideration. I'm writing this on behalf of the teachers at PVUSD. There is much concern with the school closure policy that requires teachers to attend and work while the students are kept at home. Needless to say, the news has not been met with positive news from our staff. There are obviously, there are obviously several logistical problems created by this policy child care being one. We have been told that bringing our kids to school is an option. Is sending our students home for the week or bringing our own kids to school the best policy? Are teachers expected to work effectively for an entire school day while watching and caring for young kids? And if not, what is the point of the meetings on site? I think the simplest question is to be answered is what work needs to be done in school by a teacher that they cannot do at home. I believe, given the problems with teacher pay, teacher turnover in the district, and the possibility of cutting teachers next year due to their home, maybe it would be best to side with the teachers on this one unless there is something that you need to be at work for. confused about next week's policy. We are closing the schools next week to protect children and students and that there will be a deep cleaning of the schools during this time. After the announcement of this policy, we as staff were told that, then told to come to work that there would be trainings. The term groups was used. We were also told our own children would be allowed on campus on a case-by-case -case basis. Why would I bring my own child to a place that is being closed due to a pandemic? And if his school is closed, then where do I take my child? My classroom doesn't get back in there. The bathroom in my hallway is disgusting. I watched a trained professional spray down my classroom's desks yesterday and the spray got about 60% at each desk, that's all. This is supposed to disinfect? Please reconsider this policy. It's very confusing and it's asking us to expose ourselves and our families. Why not close for a deep cleaning next week and no one comes? Then have staff back after the meeting training for distance learning. After we can be more confident that the area is in fact disinfected. Please keep our safety in From Maria Martinez, I am a teacher and am extremely concerned about being required to work at a school that the county health department has decided to close. Close all public Santa Cruz County schools. Close all schools means close all schools. This has left me feeling anxious and unsafe. The many teachers I've talked to today feel the same. Please reconsider and return to the original notice, close all public schools. Thank you. Suzanne Rose. What happens to the teachers who have children who are students who cannot go to school? They have to use their sick days because the district doesn't want to be responsible. The district won't honor the agreements that they made that say that if the county health agency calls for school closures, teachers will still get paid. This is dishonorable and cheap. I don't have school-age kids, and I still find it hard to believe that the district has so little integrity. Unbelievable. You expect us to honor our contract, and yet you trample it on every turn. Sandino Gomez. I am writing today to express my concern with the update all staff received from Michelle Rodriguez about staff being asked to come into school during the closure next week. Myself and every one of my fellow teachers are concerned about this idea and would like to register our disability. It seems counterintuitive to ask staff to come to a public space when we have determined it's not safe enough for our students. Furthermore, the whole idea is of social distancing is to not have people gathered in groups. We are a large staff. Having more than 50 people in there just by having our staff here, let alone if those of us with children are forced to bring ours because of the school closures. This seems like another great way to spread the virus. And ultimately, this is saying that the school is not safe enough for our students, but it is safe enough for our own children. What is the difference? This doesn't make a ton of sense. If the whole point of us being on campus is to develop methods to long distance teach, perhaps we should practice what we hope to teach in a long distance lesson plan. Many of us have Google Classroom and can use this as a tool to continue to instruct as we go. We are happy to work during the closure, but are not sure the suggested way is 
to do so is the best way. Thank you for your time and attention. Jen, yes. please let us know if you want um, some of us to help you, just because 135 comments are a lot of comments. So we're, yes. Yeah, so yeah. We we're open to helping you. Thank you. If I, if I start getting scratchy, I will do so, or if you get tired of hearing me say them, just flag that. Okay. From Michelle Myers. I would like to add to all of the other ideas and suggestions that the other schools private, charter, public, and colleges are sending their staff home with pay to remove infection being in the school environment and reducing person-to-person -person spread. It has been noted by many, med many medical and scientific professionals that children, though not getting man-sick cases themselves, are the highest carriers. Bringing our children on school site would defeat the point of cleansing the school environment and reducing the spread of the virus. Working in groups during the shutdown also defeats the distancing necessary that is the point of the shutdown. If we are truly to keep our students and staff free of illness and continue in the future to op open the schools and educate our children, we all need to be safe now together. If our, staff if our staff gets exposed and sick over the closure during the being in groups and meetings, then who will do the remote teaching or be back when the schools do open? From Greg Tucker. As a teacher, I am aware that in times of crisis, I must rise up to meet the problem. Once the children have safely left the dangerous situation or been transferred back to their parents' care, the teacher that should come off so that I can care for the safety and well-being of myself and my family. The district's current directive conflates these two. It says that I must return to a place that the county office of health has determined should be closed for cleaning and to com prevent community spread. This seems to ask me as a condition of my employment to violate common sense as well as county directive. Please rethink this and get it right. This sh the short-sighted nature of this just amplifies the message from this district that teachers do not matter. From Abel Mejia, will there be buses running to bring students to school? Will cafeteria staff be present to feed students if they arrive at our school? When, pa when parents see staff on campus, they believe school to be open. If it is dark, then they know there is no school. Will there be recreational and academic activities for students? For teachers, are we expected to be on campus? Why not allow us to work from home? If we are to have our classrooms cleaned, what is the point of us being there? Asking for a friend. Thank you for having the patience for allowing speakers to go beyond the one minute allotment. We delayed going our home so that we could have our voices heard. From Deborah Mallard. Our current plan to have employees attend school 316 despite the County Health Department's decision of foreclosure of schools and the CDC's recommendation of working remotely when possible seems to defy what is safe and prudent. If remote learning is an option for students, it should also should be also for employees. A large percentage of employees have children who will now be home due to closures, making it a hardship. Any plans to set up remote learning should be done in a remote learning situation. Additionally, the socioeconomic issues of remote learning are great. About 40 to 50% of students in my class last, lack internet service or only have it via a smartphone. This does not make access available equally. For our, for our some of our families, helping children, especially in primary grades, is not possible due to language and educational barriers. I urge you to develop a plan that keeps teachers and their families safe and provides equality, equity to all students. The current plan needs to be revised. From John Sims. After reading the superintendent's letter this morning, I wanted to let you know what is going through my mind. I don't mind working to prepare for electronic lesson delivery. The question, what can I do for students if we are required to close school, has been in the back of my mind all week. But I don't understand why I'm not being given the opportunity to telecommute. 
Other large organizations seem to trust their employees to do their job in we, even when they are not on site. This message, the message this sends to me is that I cannot be trusted to do my job unless somebody watches me do it. We are expecting our students to stay home and access learning materials. Why aren't we asking teaching staff to do the same? Why is working from the expectation for students but not even an option for staff? Sincerely, John Sims. From Noel Esbitt. I want to know why students are being quarantined and staff are being subjected to being around others. Why is the safety of, of all not being respected equally? I feel as if this is not safe and I am worried for myself and my children. I said the person's name. Um, I have her document open, so I'm going to read that, and then I will say her name. So now with COVID-19 shaping our lives, is this ADA campaign causing you cognitive dissonance as it is for me? In what universe is it acceptable to pressure families to send kiddos to school while hanging teacher pay in the balance? Now more than ever before, with our current health crisis, you must not need me to urge you to check yourself and reevaluate your campaign. Junior colleges are closing in California. You have canceled all out-of-county field trips, including Valencia's beloved fourth grade Sacramento overnight, for which I have put countless hours into the last few months. Why then do you continue with this 97% ADA campaign with teacher pay contingent, something that is outside of our sphere of influence? You have sat and listened to a PAC City Hall for the past three board meetings, and I have spoken at all three. When will you truly hear and then change your plan? I hope it's tonight. Thank you. That was from Sarah Leonard. Yeah. From Ryan Jones. Dear board members, it is hard for me to believe the superintendent when she emails us saying that my health and safety is her top concern when every health expert is telling me to work from home and practice social distancing, and yet my, so my superintendent is telling me I'm still required to show up to work every day. If there is no reason for me to leave my home and expose myself, I would rather stay at home and support my students through online instruction. I have heard that we are supposed to be gathering together for PD, which is against the advice of healthcare workers and is not social distancing. Please address this at tonight's meeting and ask why my health and well-being is not being considered or protected. I am emailing you three specifically because you have at some point demonstrated you care about teachers and understanding that supporting teachers is the best way a district can support students. I am giving you a chance to demonstrate that this is still true. From Colleen Hilker. Actions speak louder than words. Thank you, PVOSD and Santa Cruz County Office of Education for showing us that you do not care about teachers' lives. You do not care about the lives of our family, many of whom are students in your schools and their grandparents. Maybe you need a teacher to teach you this. There are some things that are more important than money. From Gala Haskins. Please address the following statement by Michelle Rodriguez regarding staff working at their work sites during the mandatory school closure. As a parent and PVUSD teacher, I see this as dangerous to our public safety. By staff still entering their work site, we will only prolong the process of disinfecting the schools and work sites, therefore increasing exposure on the COVID-19 virus. Please consider other possibilities that do not put our teachers and students at risk of spreading the virus. Thank you for understanding. From Brandon Dennis. From Lakeview Middle School, I would like to extend a virtual greeting to the school board. 
I recognize these times are unprecedented and that the safety of our students is of the utmost importance. I do not have an easy answer and I do not have the expertise of a public health official. Sometimes circumstances in life require us to transcend our job titles and we need to focus on the basics such as health, safety, and supporting our loved ones. This is definitely one of those times. The response of this district at this time is deeply troubling to me. I feel that the district is taking incremental steps so you can say as you, you have the best of interest at heart, but to me that does not seem to be the case. If you truly have the best interest of our students in mind, then you would not ask staff to support a site that has not been cleaned. To have the attitude that only sites with confirmation of coronavirus need to be cleaned is nonsensical and does not reassure our community. To rely on custodians to ensure our school sites are sanitized is not going far enough, especially when our custodians may be out ill or are lacking cleaning supplies. The fact that we all keep hearing as teachers, oh, you guys will be given cleaning supplies, oh, your custodians are being trained, but in reality, we've not seen anything like this taking place, is a disgraceful, embarrassing response to this national emergency. Do you really think it is a good idea to tell your teaching staff that they need to report to a school site and even bring their own children with us so we can receive remote educational training if we do not have the confidence that our school site is sanitized and free from exposure to COVID-19? I call on the board to have the intestinal fortitude to take extreme steps to ensure that every school site is deep cleaned before any certificated staff are asked to return. I call on this board to do everything necessary to ensure the safety and wellness of our students is the top priority. Do not treat this national emergency as something we can solve with baby steps. Our community is depending on you to be bold and do everything necessary to ensure our schools are safe. From Melissa Eskew. Hello members of the, boy, of the board and all present. The messaging sent to teachers has been inconsistent at best and alarming at worst. We got an email that schools were closing, our principal confirmed, then an hour or two later the superintendent sent an email that staff must come in. This disregard for teachers that have children is short-sighted. The county is closing and cleaning schools for student safety, but the superintendent's directive to have teachers come in disregards the safety of the teacher's children. If teachers can't find or afford childcare in 72 hours, they will bring their children to school, spreading germs, playing in classrooms, and destroying the purpose of closing the schools to begin with. From Ryan Jones. Dear board members, it is hard for me to believe the superintendent when she emails us saying that my health I think, yes, I did. I did receive a couple of duplicates, and I thought I caught them all. Thank you. But please be my, my backup. From Lauren McFarlane. I am sad to hear our district does not care about the health, our health as teachers. At MSD Elementary where I work, a teacher here has a child that goes to Rio Del Mar and was probably exposed to the virus. She will be bringing her child here next week if you force us to come here while the students are not in school. This is putting all the teachers here at MSD at risk. Please make the right decision and allow us teachers to work from home on report cards or other documents, homework, packets, etc. Allow us to socially distance ourselves as well. In most other professions, they have shut down all aspects of people coming into contact with each other, not just one group, i.e. our students. Plus, the older you are, the more deadly this virus has proven to be, especially if you have a compromised immune sy system or other known diseases. Please show us that you care about your teachers at PVSD and close the schools down to teachers, too. Allow us to work from home, I beg you. From Monica Pillage. I am given to understand that PVSD school board meetings are following social distancing guidelines, but school staff are expected to report to work. This is unacceptable. Any communications necessary can be held by email or Zoom meetings. From Don Krentz. As a teacher at WHS, I am concerned about my health and that of my family by unnecessarily coming to work at an empty school. I believe teachers should work remotely as it is advised that we limit exposure to others, including other staff members. I am aware, um, aware of how to implement online learning and communicating with my students. 
Thank you for supporting the health and wellness of our community. From Igor Fedotov. I am a history at Watsonville High School and I am reaching out to you to formally request that our staff members stay home next week and work remotely rather than reporting to the school site. I understand the seriousness of the situation and think that it is in everyone's best interest to stay home for their own health and the health of their families. I am concerned about my own health and the health of my partner and hope that this is taken into consideration. In order to minimize the risks of infection in our community, it is better for teachers to stay home next week. Thank you so much for your understanding. From Jesse Banwell. We were assured that hard surfaces and common areas would be disinfected daily. We were told the names of the chemicals, even the color of the labels. Yet as I write this on Friday afternoon, no surfaces at my site have been disinfected, not even once. Now the schools are closing for safety reasons. We teachers, who are the most susceptible to the infection, are still being told that we must report to our disinfected classrooms all week. I must ostensibly to provide distance learning content for our students. If the district and administration truly cared about its teacher safety, why won't they allow us to work remotely? Providing online communication for our students does not require us to come to a building that has a fairly high chance of being contaminated with the coronavirus. From Alejandra Magana. I am a teacher at WHS and concerned about my health and that of my family for coming to work at school. I believe teachers should be allowed to work remotely as it is advised that we limit exposure to others. I don't feel like our time is served appropriately by getting a training on how to implement online information or cleaning desks. From Kim, Kim Cunningham. Many tech companies, schools, Starbucks, etc., government officials are social distance, distancing. The decision by our school district to work all week does not make me feel valued. Is this coming from a health mandate with COE or our district only? Apple has cubbies and offices and they have been off for two weeks. A school is on the front lines. I would like to share my voice and concerns. From Ashley Strickland, thank you for taking your time to read my email. It is very much appreciated. If you, okay. My concern is that we as teachers and classified staff are getting a mixed message from Dr. Rodriguez. It is ex explained below. Last night at approximately 8.26 p.m., and just note that some of these actually came in yesterday, um, we received an email stating that we were not coming to work and we are to stay home for the week with PVFT support and that we would be compensated for the week because it came from county from the county education superintendent and that our children should be home as well. Now today we received an email stating that we are to come to work and bring our children to work with us. This is counterproductive to the original email that the county of education superintendent has set out. I know that my colleagues and I would appreciate any clarification that you can give us. Your support again is greatly appreciated. Hope you and your family stays health healthy during this time of uncertainty. From Julie Rodenberg, I am concerned that PVOSD is ignoring the science and advice of the County Health Department placing PVOSD employees and their families in jeopardy. It is a fact that carriers can be contagious and have the symptoms of the virus. The letter from the county said that all schools in Santa Cruz County will be closed. They made no exceptions for staff. There is very strong evidence that social distancing is the only thing slowing this virus down. We learned this 100 years ago during the Spanish flu. We are educators, why would we ignore this science? Coming to school and being around others, even if it is in smaller groups, means continued exposure. If it is deemed unsafe for our students to be here, then I will not bring my own children here either. We are being put in an impossible situation. Teachers are feeling that their health and well-being and the health and well-being of our families is being ignored with this mandate. Please bring up these issues at the meeting. From Guillermo Marmalejo. My name is Guillermo Marmalejo. 
Aguajado. I am a teacher at WHS and the department chair for the social studies department. I'm writing to you to formally request that teachers work remotely from home this coming week as opposed to working on site. I request this in the interest of public safety as well as the safety of my family. If closing down the school and sending students home is a matter of public safety, then surely teachers are within the parameters of this safety plan based on prevention. Thank you for your time and consideration. From Terry Rodriguez. I just want to address the following. We who make up the classified also have the same concerns as the teachers as we too are on the front lines and work closely with both teachers and students. Every day we are exposed to the same environment as the teachers and the fact that that is was mentioned that it was a surprise the teachers were expected to show up and no mention of the other staff meaning classified work knowledge concerns me. This crisis involves everyone on site that all work closely together. Social distancing should be a concern for everyone. We are exposed to every student or staff member that is ill due to the fact that we are at the checkpoint, checkout point. I am hoping that all school personnel is a priority when it comes to making important decisions during this very difficult time. From Heidi Story, we all have extreme concerns for being asked to return to our sites and bring our children next week. Nearly every school and many, many businesses are closed to help contain the spread of the virus. This is the wisest thing to do. I don't think we should be asked to risk ourselves and our families. This doesn't make any sense. Please express our concerns to the board. From Marla Chapa, please address the following statement by Michelle Rodriguez regarding staff working at their work sites during the mandatory school closure. As a parent and PVSD teacher, I see this as dangerous to our public safety. By staff still entering their work site, we will only prolong the process of disinfecting the schools and work sites, therefore increasing exposure to the COVID-19 virus. Please consider other possibilities that do not put our teachers and students at risk of spreading the virus. from Adam Didier. I am a teacher at Watsonville High School and I am writing to formally request that staff work remotely from home next week rather than reporting to the school site. I am concerned not only with my own health and the health of my family, but also with minimizing the risk of spreading this virus within the community. I believe that by taking extra precautions such as not gathering at the school site, we can all contribute to minimizing the risks in our community. Thank you very much for your understanding. from Eli Reynolds. Board members, thank you for getting together to see how to proceed with the current health concerns surrounding our society as whole. I am disappointed by in the lack of concern the district management is showing its employees. This is an uneasy time, and yes, we want to do what's best for our students, but we, all, we have an obligation to do what is safe for us and our family. Being in a place that has so many people at it recently without deep cleanings is concerning. If COVID-19 is a major health concern, I would think the district would facilitate cleaning before putting us back in such an environment. Another major concern of mine is what to do with my child during my workday. Daycares are also closed due to COVID-19 concerns. Although I was told I am able to, I do not want to bring my child who is under two into an unclean environment because of risks of touching something that has germs. That is not just COVID-19, but all germs that are present when you get a group of kids together. I am also very low on sick days due to having you to use sick days when I took my parental bonding time. Now I am in the predicament of either losing pay or bringing my child to an unclean environment. I urge the board to think of how they would feel in this situation. How would your family react to such a situation? Please do what is best for your employees and take the precautions that scientists and governments are advising to keep people safe. This is uncharted water for everyone and we recognize that. This has to be a hard decision for everyone involved, but please use precaution. I will do what the board decides and I hope that the right decision for teachers as well as students. From Carla Villalobos, 
I am saddened by the disrespect the district has towards staff. I don't see why staff should have to come in and expose ourselves more than we already have. Then we have to bring our children and expose them too. I understand coming in one day to set up an online class. The whole isn't necessary. Other counties have completely shut down. I don't understand why can't we? From Maya Murphy. There is very strong evidence that showing social distancing is the only thing that's slow slowing the coronavirus down. Mandating that teachers continue to come to school, forcing us to be around others, even if this is a small group, means continued exposure. Meeting in small, meeting in small groups, passing in hallways and lunchrooms, touching common use doorknobs and copy machines, etc., continuing to use public restrooms which are not regularly sanitized and spending time in our rooms which are either unsafe for us to be in because of the process of being cleaned with strong disinfectants or have not yet been sanitized even once is not social distancing. Furthermore, offering us the option to bring our children with us to school is both unwise and unsafe. It if, if it is deemed unsafe for our students to be here, then I will not bring my own child here either. We are being put in an impossible situation. The need to stay home is very important to limit the spread of this pandemic, care for our families, and ensure that we are not bringing further exposure home and many of us don't have enough sick days built up to weather this storm. Teachers are feeling that their health and well-being and the health and well-being of our families is being ignored with this mandate. I spent many hours last night and today putting together work for my students to complete at home during the school closure. I spent hours between last night and right now putting together informational handouts, notes, and instructions for Google Classroom and a research project that could be conducted remotely so that my students would have work to complete in the event that the shutdown lasts longer. My TA spent an entire period finding students that I don't have today in their other classes and handing out this important this information to them. I have done my due diligence to prepare a backup plan for my students' education. I will be available at home on Google Classroom and Gmail to answer any questions that arise. I can conduct any training virtually for new online teaching programs that might come up. I am committed to my students and their success, but not to furthering the spread of this pandemic. Please don't force me to put myself, my child, and my entire family at risk in order to check a box that teachers are working. I ask you to respect this. I ask you this in respect and fear. From Christy Judd. Dear respected board members, were you aware that our assistant superintendent of HR Ms. Clean just signed an MOU with our union requiring us to be on site next week. I am equally disappointed that my union didn't ask its members' opinions in any way, but I will take that up with them. And we can bring our kids to work. If we closed our district down entirely as we can for at least two weeks or with a plan to return when the governor and county health officer approve, the contamination will have died down with no need for any personnel to be on site to sanitize, disinfect at the site level, hence lessening potential exposure and taking care of our staff, not to mention saving so much time, energy, and resources. Sadly, we don't have an emergency distance learning plan in place and hopefully we will we'll after this. Just sending out links or videos without all proper channels in place may do more harm than good. The reaction to a poorly planned rollout of distance learning could deter support for such efforts in the future. I would be happy to be part of a team that explored best practices of how to put together a well-developed plan that includes how to properly audit our community's capabilities, how to make sure to comply with state, local and state requirements, tips for properly training, teach, training teachers for virtual learning days, a process for implementing district-wide communication, how to mitigate risk when things go wrong, how to inform trained parents and teachers. Trying to inform and even get parents to show up to pick up a packet and gather all the classroom materials needed or access something online for secondary will sadly we can try, but having nothing in place to ensure participation will be a challenge at this point. The county information sent out to families made no mention of any such expectation of parents or students. So to require teachers at this point with no training to try and do this with fidelity would be a poor choice in my instructional technology expertise. As our government has declared a state of emergency as well as local county health officer, please have the district complete form J13-13A. Our funding will remain in place and instruction minutes, um, instructional minutes penalties will be waived. No need to continue to have a staff on campus during the state of emergency. And that's the time for that.
from Ryan Olivas. I am a teacher at PV High, and I would like to share my thoughts on the letter I received from Dr. Rodriguez regarding next week. While I agree that closing the school to students next week, I disagree with the d directive to have staff reporting to campus. Social distancing is critical to slowing the spread of the virus, and closing for an extended period will it allow for deep cleaning and provide a window for any lingering spores to expire. Staff on campus would prolong the potential exposure or would eventually lead to another need to close. We need to act boldly right now to halt the spread using all available tools. Having staff on campus during a shutdown is misguided and dangerous. From Joseph Minildi. I appreciate the opportunity to be heard and also recognize the forward thinking in closing schools at this point in time. I am asking you to consider the possibility of allowing teachers to work from home rather than come to school next week. We can still prepare for distance learning, communicate with each other, and build quality lessons for our students while working from home. Many certificated staff have kids in local schools and we are impacted by the school closure. As a parent of three kids in local schools, I find the idea of bringing my children to work with me to be irresponsible. I can and will work from home, however, I don't want to be punished by losing sick leave for working from home. I'm hearing the same message from many teachers and certificated employees at our site. At the very least, please consider making an exception for people who have children at home and for high-risk employees so that they can work from home and prepare for distance learning. There is no reason not to keep schools open or available for those who need to come into school and make copies or do whatever is needed to prepare for distance learning. How there, however, there is no reason to require that we work in the classroom. Classified staff should be given the same consideration and we should plan for things to take longer to get done and we should take care of our highest community by allowing them to stay home as well. It is all of our responsibility to take care of each other and as a school board member, it is your responsibility to look after the well-being of students and staff alike. From Maria Alcantar. To whom it may concern, I want to voice my concerns, which I am sure are the concerns of many other colleagues regarding recent information that was shared with us. We received an email from our superintendent yesterday night stating that the school superintendents and the Santa Cruz County of Office Education have decided in concurrence with the Santa Cruz County Health Services Agency to close all public Santa Cruz County schools for the week of March 16th to 20th. This morning we received another one stating that we had to be at work next week and we could bring our children with us. I am really confused as to how we could follow the social distancing protocols that have been recommended by our health departments and CDC. Furthermore, I'm having a hard time understanding why the situation changed from schools closed to only with no students on campus. From my understanding, a big percentage of infections have resulted from adult-to-adult -adult contact. So what will the protocol, so what will be the protocol for next week? My other question is regarding the sanitizing of our schools. Is there a plan to deep sanitize the schools? Will this be able to happen while we are in our classrooms and offices next week? We recently received an email from one of our staff members stating that a family member of hers was exposed to a possible COVID-19 case, and therefore she would also self-isolate for the day. What is going to be the follow-up on that? What about the people like myself who are exposed to the staff member? Who will give us updates? I am seriously concerned not only for myself, but for the vulnerable pe people that are around me daily. Again, will there be a deep sanitizing protocol for our school? Lastly, I have been hearing a lot of different information regarding if we will be able to hold parent-student st teacher meetings next week or not. What will be the protocol on that? I heard from different colleagues that no students are allowed on campus, yet our children, who are also students, can come to work with us. I know that the situation is fluid and then things might change from day to day, but I would appreciate some answers to these questions. It seems as if there are pieces of information and protocols that need to be reflected upon at a deeper level as decisions concerning this virus are made in our district and county. We want to offer the best for our students, but or in order for that to happen, we also need to take care of ourselves and well-being. From Sharon Paul. I have a major concern about coming to work next week. We were told that all the students are to stay home in their homes, only going out when necessary. We were told that there was going to be a deep cleaning of all classrooms in Watsonville High. Then we were told that all staff need to come to work and bring your children to work with you if need be. How can they deep clean with staff and kids running around? We were told that the virus can live on a surface for a week. Shouldn't the buildings be empty to allow the cleaning and wait time? How can that happen if the buildings are occupied? 
Also, I myself am in the over 60 population, and this is very worrisome to me. If most of the population is being told to go home and stay inside, don't go out unless it's necessary, why then are the teachers and staff told to come to work and, hey, bring your children with you? It just doesn't make any sense to me. This comment is from Kristen Prestridge at Lakeview Middle School, and I'm writing to ask you to grant permission to work remotely from home to PVUSD certificated employees. At Lakeview, we've had extensive training in Google Classroom, and so we are all prepared to deliver our curriculum online. All of our students are issued a Chromebook to bring to and from school every day. Any additional training as required by the district could be accessed remotely. Most professionals in the greater Bay Area have been mandated to work from home. Please extend the same option to us, educated professionals who already work from home most evenings and weekends. I ask that you give this option serious consideration because our health and the health of our community is at grave risk. We have been told that there would be an extra cleaning and disinfectants made available. While I did see a custodian wiping down students' desks on Wednesday, I have yet to see any additional disinfectant, hand sanitizer, or extra cleaning. Based on this, I believe we do not have the capacity to clean our schools quickly or efficiently enough at this time to ensure our safety. I am very concerned and confused that staff is expected to be at their work site while our schools are closed next week. This seems contradictory, contradictory, keeping our staff healthy. If we are able to properly plan for distance learning from our homes, shouldn't we just do that? It seems like an unnecessary risk to the health of our staff and their families. Did I read the name on that one? Nan checked it. I believe it was Denise Alba. From Amy Fitzgerald, I am able to do my work that could be done in the classroom from home and collaborate with my colleagues online. I would prefer to work from home Monday through Wednesday of next week rather than work on site. From Phyllis Nagamine, on Wednesday, March 11, 2020 at H.A. Hyde Elementary School in room CC2, SELPA staff was involved in a mandatory staff training with fellow SELPA, fellow SELPA members from Rio de Mar Elementary School. There are about 25 people that we sat next to and engaged with in group exercise as we shared papers, learning tools, and had a close one-on-one -on -one discussions. Then we found out later that same day via PVUSD email that a person from Rio del Mar tested positive for COVID-19 and has been tasted, placed in quarantine. How can we be reassured that no other person that was at that meeting was carrying the virus? From Maria Gutierrez, I want to express my concerns over having to come to work the week of the 16th. I currently visit my grandmother constantly since she was recently hospitalized. Having to come to work, I feel like I'm putting myself at risk and the risk lives of my family members. I believe that I can be just as productive working from home without having to expose myself and putting the lives of others at risk to the coronavirus. I hope you take my concerns into serious consideration. Thank you for your time. From Luisa Arias, I am an education specialist at PV High School. Currently, I am concerned with the district's intention of having staff certif certificated and classified come to work the week of March 16th through 20th. I feel that by coming to work, I am putting myself as well as other at risk by exposing further contact interaction. Working from home would be the most efficient. Thank you for your time, and I hope you take my concern into serious consideration. From Brenda Amador, in regards to the proceedings of the school closures for students, but not for the school district personnel except Rio Del Mar, I believe it would be a great idea to keep the school sites and district closed to the public. I understand we want to keep students and personnel safe, and I believe that be limiting human contact could help us all. If parents should have any concerns or questions, the staff will be available by phone. We want parents and their students to stay safe and, most importantly, healthy. Much like the county's public health officer's directive is to stay home and minimize social contact to the extent possible, PVOSD sites should also limit social contact. This will help bring more ease to the personnel who, like myself, have come to meet, 
have to meet with parents and children on a daily basis. Thank you and hope that we all remain safe and healthy. From Jason Cordova. For those, of with, with, for those of us with breathing issues such as asthma, is it still recommended to go to work? Will our spring break from the 30th to the 3rd be canceled if this coronavirus situation continues, or will we be asked to come to work? From Alfonso Medrano. My name is Alfonso. I am a site technician for the PVSD. Frankly, I feel uneasy about putting ourselves at risk by coming into work next week. I work with a staff member who was at Rio de Mar last week doing some activities with students, making him and everyone he interacts with a possible carrier. Next week, I am supposed to disinfect all of the Chromebooks we have here to distribute them to families to take home. So as far as I know, I have already been at risk for exposure and will be exposing myself further this up and coming week. My mother has an autoimmune deficiency that makes her a high-risk carrier for this virus. Her and my father are elderly and live in the same town as I, so I see them frequently. Coincidentally, my mother's family is also going through a tough time with my grandfather's declining health. He is basically on his deathbed. I would love to go see him, but I am scared to expose my grandmother and other family members by doing so. I hope you can understand why are we, what we are going through on our level, and I hope the rest of the board can sympathize with me and many more that share my feelings. Thank you for your time, and I hope you take this into consideration. From Hilary Reed, I'm writing to express my concerns that PVSD teachers are expected to attend school next week when students are not here. We are diligent professionals who are very tech savvy and capable of working from home. I know that I and most of my colleagues are planning to assign and grade work remotely through Google Classroom as we have been doing for years. Making us come into our classrooms is simply not necessary. We are being told by all scientific studies that the best thing for us to do is stay home and limit our exposure to other people. Why put us and our families at risk so that we can document we attended work? Admin can easily check up on our group Google Classrooms and our gradebooks to see that we are in fact working if that is a concern. Otherwise, we should be following the advice of all the professionals and taking care of ourselves so we will limit the spread of the virus. Hopefully, you and the other board members will see that this is the logical solution and make a change to your policy. It's signed Hillary Kluger. From Bill Beecher. Both Vietnam and Cambodia closed their schools early on in order to minimize the spread of COVID-19. Children may not be affected as much as adults, but they can be transmitter to, transmitters to adults. I agree with shutting down of the PVSD schools. You could have done Rio del Mar as an isolated case, and that would have been short-sighted. This virus has a 12 to 14 day undetected period, so you cannot wait to see if it occurs. Your present action is a tactical one, but you must be prepared for a long shutdown. The U.S. government has been very late to respond to this world crisis. UCF medical people are predicting that 1.6 million Americans may die. Acting now is, the, is prudent, but be prepared for a long school shutdown. Can we provide internet teaching if this is necessary? If you are prepared for the worst, it rarely happens. Our government may be failing at this, but you do not have to. My prayers are with all of you. I return early this coming week. From Eric Silas. In light of the COVID-19 pandemic and the cases that have appeared in Santa Cruz County, today's letter from Superintendent Rodriguez is very concerning. The purpose of school closures is to prevent the spread and reduce the rate of transmission of the COVID-19 cases that are anticipated to follow. The decision to have staff report to work will undermine school closures. The proposed intention of having all staff prepare distance learning resources and engage in school projects and training leaves the implication that despite the closure, our district does not want to pay all staff without something in return and prioritizes fiscal issues over health. Santa Cruz County claims to hold the safety and well-being of all students, families, and school personnel as its highest priority, yet chooses to risk the health of all staff by requiring them to be at work. You put staff, families, and the community at risk because of continued exposure. 
your strategic use of prioritizing continued learning for students as a means to manipulate staff and construct a narrative that supports your agenda is offensive and egregious. Last night's letter from Dr. Rodriguez made no mention of having staff return to work, and today's update during working hours limited the response from school staff who will be directly impacted by our return to work on the 16th. While we understand a lot of discussion and thinking must go into making district countywide decisions, we urge you to prioritize the health of all staff and have them work from home if their jobs allow and excuse staff from duties if remote work is not possible. And this is signed by Eric Silas, Marisol Zamora, Lee Klein, Alexandra Wilson, uh, Marissa Jansen, Jessica Corona, and Esther Ramos. from Jamie Bloom. So in between my principal's email to staff this morning, do not come to work next week, and Michelle Rodriguez is 20 minutes later, staff will be on site next week, my emotions have run the gamut. How does having, hear us, having us here on campus along with each other and their children fulfill the social distance criteria recommended to lessen the spread of the virus? When will that deep cleaning happen? While I'm here in my classroom? And by the way, though I missed the custodian's deep cleaning training, I witnessed one aspect of it yesterday when my custodian waltzed through my room with student presence, squirting each desk with a fluid and then departing. The fluid was streamed onto the desk and so covered only approximately 5% of the total surface. These district mandates and minimal cleaning protocols do not make me feel respected or valued by my district. These district mandates and minimal cleaning protocols do not make me feel safe. Would you please bring my comments to the attention of the participants at the emergency meeting? from Lizette Rodriguez. It's my understanding that PVSD schools would be closed starting Monday uh, 16th, 2020 due to the COVID-19 concerns. As a sister of a student at PVSD and a community member, I would like to suggest for the district to follow the homeschool curriculum where students should be given homework packets and or assignments that can sub be submitted online. Some students already have Chromebooks that are used to complete assignments. Therefore, asking students to do this would not be a burden. We need to ensure that we continue helping students advance academically, even during a public health outbreak, since the PVSD students are performing below average, both in English language arts and mathematics compared to the state. Uh, ELA 46.11 points below standard, V state three points below standard, and math 77.7 .7 points below standard, V state 33.5 points below standard. Also, the homework packets can help decrease stress for parents and keep the students busy for a couple of hours a day. My name is Kara Mattis, Mateus, and I am a teacher at Lakeview Middle School. Coming from the place as both a PVUSD teacher and a parent of a young child, I am reaching out to you in concern and disappointed that our district leaders are asking teachers to attend their school sites next week. To require teachers to attend school when county superintendents and the Department of Health have chosen to close them is socially irresponsible and unsafe. A national emergency was declared, which has stressed the importance of social distancing, yet the district is calling upon teachers to do the opposite and congregate. Already, teachers have been so vulnerable to the virus since we are exposed to hundreds of students and visitors a day. There is no ability to know who has been exposed. Teachers need to practice social distancing as well and see if they are exhibiting symptoms. To come together at our school sites next week truly defeats the purpose of the closure and could potentially lead to more cases occurring. The invitation to bring children to work also defeats the purpose of asking our children to stay home. We are trying to limit social interactions as much as possible. A solution is that the teachers should be able to set up their distance learning curriculum at home, similar to what much of the population has been doing to limit social interactions. Also, before teachers are asked to return to their school sites, all schools should be deep cleaned. We have not seen any demonstration of this happening at our site. I haven't even received cleaning supplies in my classroom. I don't even have a sink with soap. Right now, many teachers are feeling as if they aren't worth being protected and supported. Please respect our health and safety. Our short-term protection will yield a long-term positive resolution. Thank you for your time.
from Ashley Scully. Thank you so much for closing the schools. I was wondering what you have have to say to teachers who have people in their homes who are in the demographic most vulnerable to COVID-19. We are very scared about being around students while this virus is circulating for fear that we catch it from children who so show no symptoms then bring it home and pass it on to our loved ones. Will we be asked to come back to work with students while the virus is still circulating around our community? Thank you again for once again for the steps you've taken to protect our community. from Ramiro Medrano. My name is R Ramiro Medrano and I am a school counselor at PVHS. I feel like district employees and our families are at most at risk for this exposure to COVID-19. What is the logic behind us coming on site to work next week? What can we do on site that we cannot do from home? Is this a trust issue? Is it district employees who are getting sick? Symptoms can be visible until days or weeks from getting exposed. I have family members who have a weak or compromised immune system. How can I be guaranteed that myself or they will not get sick? This can potentially become a big legal matter for the district due to not taking the necessary precautions to protect their staff and their families. Reinstate the decision for staff to not be at work next week. Deep clean the schools, analyze what staff are essential to come back to work, and require them to be physically present while the rest continue to not be present. Learn from places like China, Italy, and New York. They did not take the necessary steps, and now it is rapidly spreading. If Watsonville comes to that point, this distri the district will be a central player in creating that reality. From Kenna Gallagher. I am emailing to voice my serious concerns for teachers and families that may be impacted by the district's decision to have school staff return to campus for the week of the 16th to 20th. Would it not be more pertinent to have teachers and their kids stay at home to keep their health in peak condition so when students return, staff will be healthy enough to reach them? It seems risky to have school staff and their children on campus potentially being exposed to and or spreading the virus around campus. If all staff stay home for 10 days to let the virus die naturally, then sanitize the 11th. So by day 12, we can all return to work, school, happy and healthy. I appreciate, appreciate your time and hope you make the decision to keep teachers and school staff at home to keep this pandemic minimized. From Margaret Rosa. I value and respect the scientists and researchers who say that the best way to slow down transmission is social isolation. Coming to work with over 70 colleagues and their dependent children isn't social isolation. This virus can remain on surfaces for a week. Speaking on behalf of tenured and non-tenured staff, I say we are being asked to risk the health of our children and ourselves because the district lacks the trust that we will work effectively from home. We have report cards, distant learning preparations, and planning that can all occur from the safety of our homes. I've been ill for a few weeks now. I took off three days of work due to a cough, sore throat, and laryngitis over a week ago, and I've been experiencing malaise. For all I know, I had a mild case of this virus. Asking for a doctor's note to excuse an absence when the healthcare system is being overwhelmed is foolworthy. Unless someone has pneumonia or worse, all in ill individuals should remain self-quarantined and shouldn't go to a physician. It's the responsible thing to do. Please consider that when asking for a, a teacher excuse for absence. Lastly, the 1918 flu, Spanish flu epidemic pandemic serves as a model for what to do and what not to do during these times. Please respect the lessons of history and show that you respect us as professionals to know what is best for us, our families, and our communities. May you and your loved ones remain healthy during these difficult times. Thank you. From Graciela Diaz Lorenco. I am a teacher at H.A. Hyde. I completely agree with the statement. Ah, it was a statement we read earlier. From Connor O'Brien. I am a teacher at Aptos High School and I'm writing to formally submit for your consideration a request that you allow staff to work from home next week. The requirement that we work on campus Monday through Wednesday stands in contrast to the county health department's suggestion that we practice social distancing and therefore puts our most vulnerable staff in harm's way. Many of our students at Aptos High School are over age 60 and have pre-existing conditions. We need to take action to protect our teachers and by proxy our students and our community. 
Thank you for taking the time to read my email. I hope the trustees will reconsider their decision and minimize the impact of this growing threat to our community. My name is Carrie Gill. I am a teacher at AJHS and my children attend Mar Vista. I also live with my 70 year old parents. My mother has just been diagnosed with a heart condition. They are in the at risk population. I am extremely uncomfortable with being asked to go to my school site next week to prepare for online learning, especially with my children. Sites have not been cleaned or disinfected. I refuse to put my family in that situation. We are choosing isolation so that we can protect our family. However, it feels that ADA funds have taken a priority over my, our family's health by having students attend school at all this week. Please respect our personal choices about how we choose to handle this for our families. We should be able to work remotely the entire week and into the future. There is nothing I need for my site that I can't get from my home except toilet paper. I am so pleased to hear that there is a plan to feed our neediest students. I do question our plan for online learning and how this will affect our students who do not have access. It's a difficult and unprecedented situation. Please let teachers work remotely starting Monday so we can stop the spread of this quickly and get back to our classrooms. From Jennifer Doty. During the district office mandatory staff meeting regarding coronavirus on Friday at 11.30 a.m., one of the staff asked the county superintendent about having to work and bringing their children to school with them with no child care during the closure. He gave a response that was consistent and as confusing as the original messaging that it will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. He also added that he would not be bringing his daughters to work next week. I felt the lack of compassion from him with this statement. He was standing in front of an audience that was door-to-door -door and standing room only from all levels of profession. His resources and salary and life far outweigh the majority of employees standing in that room. These employees are trying to figure out how to keep their families safe, still be paid, and required to work without any child care. I feel this was not properly thought out before closing schools and requiring staff to work. It's a tragedy to hear the county superintendent be so unaware of the message that he is sending to the hardworking employees of the district. From Aaliyah True. I am a teacher at Aptos High School and I am writing to formally submit for your consideration a request that you allow staff to work from home next week. The requirement that we work on campus Monday through Wednesday stands in contrast to the County Health Department's suggestion that we practice social distancing and therefore puts our most vulnerable staff in harm's way. Many of our employees at Aptos High School are over the age of 60 and have pre-existing conditions. We need to take action to protect our teachers and by proxy our students in our community. Thank you for taking the time to read my email, I hope the trustees will reconsider the decision and minimize the impact of this growing threat to our community. Uh, from Chantelle Emanuel, I am writing to ask you to consider allowing teachers to work from home. In the past two days, the World Health Organization has declared COVID-19 a health pandemic, the president has declared a national emergency, and Santa Cruz County has closed down all schools. The county public officer issued a directive for students and families to stay home and minimize social contact to the extent possible. Families in Santa Cruz County are left without options. I have two young children that I would have to bring to my work with me. Not only is that irresponsible in light of the county public health officer's directive, it would be impossible. Anyone who has raised children may have experienced, my children will not stand by idly while I work on my laptop. If a business or organization has the ability to allow its employees to stay home, they should. Please reconsider this decision. From Stacy Aronovici. I have been a teacher in the PVSD at Aptos High School for 23 years. Those of us who have been around for a long time know that we have had our share of crises that we have that we've had to help our students and colleagues navigate through. With the COVID-19 virus, we are in uncharted territory. Preparing to go to work early this morning and saying goodbye to my students for at least a week, I pondered what I could do to reassure them. What activities could I send them home with to help them stay calm and have a sense of purpose and also move the curriculum forward? I believe my students genuinely appreciated the effort I put in today and they seemed reassured. As the day wore on, however, the teachers and staff at Aptos High did not feel so reassured. Questions began to form about the district's decision to mandate that the teachers and support staff remain on campus next week. I urged the board to reconsider the decision to ask staff to work on site and allow us to instead work at home. 
Some of us have school-aged children that we need to take care of, and bringing them with us to work is not a viable solution. Others lived with loved ones as our caregivers for or themselves at at-risk category for this virus. I asked the board to follow the county public health officer issued directive for students and families to stay at home and minimize social contact to the extent possible. This should include all families, including your teachers and support staff. From Dr. Ricardo Huerta. Keep all staff and faculty at home to care for their families and protect themselves from the virus. From Joanne Tabaz. To quote the joint statement of the LA Unified School District and San Diego Unified School District, California has now entered a critical new phrase, phase in the fight to stop the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. There is evidence that the virus is already present in the communities we serve and our efforts now must be aimed at preventing its spread. These school districts like our own are closing schools in their district effective Monday in order to contribute to this effort. It was with great relief that I read the email sent last night, Thursday, from our Board of Supervisors announcing the closing of our schools. As much as I love our students and am devoted to their education, I felt uneasy with the possibility of sacrificing my own health for them. In fact, under the circumstances, I felt very uncomfortable even coming to school one more day, Friday, before we close. I teach first graders at Mar Vista School, and they, like first graders everywhere, are like a pile of puppy dogs and always touching each other and touching their mouths and efficient at washing their hands even under the best of circumstances. My classroom is contaminated everywhere despite my mitigation efforts and the hard work of our custodians. I appreciate the proactive stance our district has taken to protect our students and their families from contact with the COVID-19 virus, but I am flabbergasted at the lack of respect for teaching staff. In order to slow the rate of contamination, the best experts in the nation, indeed in the world, are all recommending that we practice social distancing. The most effective actions we can take to slow the spread of this disease are self-quarantine at home. Studies are showing that the virus lives on surfaces from two to five days. Why should we be expected to leave our quarantine at home and go to classrooms and school sites which have held students less than three days ago? There is much that is not yet known about the transmission of the virus. Should we be testing it with our own lives? While I appreciate the desire of the district to initiate plans for the distance and online education with our students, I object to the requirement that we put our own safety in jeopardy by going into the school sites on Monday. There are too many among us who are in the vulnerable population due to age or other health issues. This is something that can be accomplished just as easily on a later date in the week or via distance learning for ourselves. Please consider requiring teachers to come to our school sites on Monday and come up with a different plan to initiate distance education for our students. Thank you. From Edward Rico. I want to acknowledge that this is a difficult time for everyone, including decision makers. However, I have a number of concerns about the current plan. A shutdown of one week makes no sense. Are we expecting things to be better in one week? I don't think so. If 14 days is the amount of time that public health officials suggest for quarantine, how is one week even relevant? At a minimum, the shutdown should be extended until the beginning of spring break so that we have three weeks to determine the progress of the pandemic and develop a more comprehensive, carefully constructed, and appropriate local response. If we are being told that social distancing is the goal to slow the spread of the virus, why are we being forced to do the opposite and go to our job sites? While I understand the need for preparing ongoing learning for opportunities for our students, we can and should be doing this from home. The thorough disinfecting of the schools while we are being required to be on site is inconsistent with a policy that reflects a concern for our health. While I applaud in concept the invitation for staff to bring their kids with them, this only increases the health risk to everyone and further strays from the social distancing imperative. Suggesting that being forced to show up at our job sites is somehow a benefit to us in terms of continuing to be paid and protecting retirement, health benefits, etc. is nonsensical. There are alternatives to ensure that these con things continue and health and retirement benefits and salary are meaningless if I'm dead. I strongly urge you to immediately extend the school closures until the start of spring break and allow us to work from home rather than forcing us to put our lives at further risk. Thank you for consideration of this request. Did I read his name? Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm still okay if you're okay continuing me to read them. Okay. Alicia will mention that she's I will drink my tea. <laughs> yeah. I'm, as a teacher, I.
I'll read this last one and then I'll I'll filter a couple out. Um, okay. From Vicky Sanchez. I was very surprised to learn that staff are expected to be at school on Monday. The custodians need to have access to rooms and time to deep clean. It will interfere with their work to have staff on site. Also, if schools are unsafe for kids, what makes them safe for adults? Staff are being told they can bring their kids to school, but this, that does not seem like a safe or productive situation for the adults or the children. As a teacher implementing a new language arts program for two grade levels, four through five, and two languages, English and Spanish, I have been planning work to do at home for quite some time before I run out of things to do. Plus, report cards are due soon, and that alone can eat up a chunk of time. Normally, I would spend most of my weekend doing them, so it would be nice to have some time to work on them during school hours. If all of my students can take home their Chromebooks, and if we get free Wi-Fi for my students who do not have internet access, I would love to continue classes online. I enjoy being with my students and would love to get to collaborate with them online. We all have laptops, access to curriculum online, and access to Google Suite for collaboration. We can conference on Google as well. I don't mind working during work hours. I would just feel safer doing it from home. I think most of our staff at HA Hyde already does a lot with technology and learning about distance learning should not be something we should have to come together to learn. Hello, video, screencasts, etc. Teach us to use distance learning tools as a distance learning platform. I realize these are hard times and we you know, don't have strong leadership at the federal level, so states, counties, school districts, and municipalities are scrambling to figure out what to do to keep people healthy. But working from home seems like a no-brainer to me. Thank you for considering my input and for your leadership and service. Vicki Sanchez. All right, I'm going to forward a couple uh, to Kim and then a couple to um, Maria. They'll be forwarded as an attachment. Give you just a few minutes to do that. Kim, are you able to, did you get them? No? I'm going to keep reading then. All right. I got my 10 second break there. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> From Kiva Silver. Dear esteemed trustees, thank you for responding so quickly to the current coronavirus threat in our school district. I am, however, writing express my serious concern regarding your district's policy requiring teachers to deliver online education to their students from their classrooms work site during this exceptionally difficult situation. As a faculty member at UCSC who is currently adjusting to the shift to online education, I understand how difficult it is to enact consistent work policy while ensuring continuing education in the midst of such a fast-changing situation. Nevertheless, your mandate requiring teachers to work on site next week is misguided for the following reasons. First, many, children, many teachers have, children, have their own children at home as their schools are similarly shifting to online education. Your suggestion that children can simply come to work with their teacher or parents is deeply concerning. You are, in effect, asking teachers not only to risk their own health through potential contamination, coronavirus can live on hard surfaces for several days, but also risk their children's health. The CDC recommendation is to stay at home, not bring your children to work. Second, your policy is intrinsically degrading. 
Teachers spend countless hours at home grading papers, designing lesson plans, emailing students, writing letters of recommendation, and planning curricula. Your policy assumes that teachers will only work if confined to their work site, which also disregards all the work they already do at home, but also disrespects their commitments to serving their students. As a professor who is effectively shifting by necessity to an online education model, I assure you that online instruction is the most effective in the comfort of one's own home, especially when facing a life-threatening viral infection. Thirdly, third, your policy is not consistent with that implemented by my employer, UCSC, which has not resorted to the unhealthful, degrading, and dehumanizing policy of requiring their teachers to work on site. Given this policy discrepancy, are we parents to assume that UCSC respects and trusts their instructors more than PVUSD? If this is the case, I will certainly recommend that my graduate students, many of whom are considering a professional career, and teaching is a profession as teachers, not consider teaching in PVUSD. Yours sincerely from a very concerned educating, educator and parent, Kiva Silver. So from Edward Rico. Okay. All right. Like I said, I did get a couple of duplicates. From Alejandra Vivia. I urge the board to reconsider the decision of requiring teachers to work for three days during this coronavirus pandemic. Mostly adults are being affected by this deadly virus. However, teachers, adults, are being obliged to go to work exposing us to greater risk. We can develop remote learning from home. Thank you. from Burr. It seems contradictory to tell staff that they can bring their kids to work. Why close schools then tell staff that they have to come in and can bring their kids? What are you thinking, PVSD? I appreciate the work and the hustle going on right now, so no disrespect intended, but it's a cray crazy suggestion that defeats the purpose. From Deborah Matlow. Trying to open this document. There we go. Dear board members, my name is Deborah Matlow and I am a dedicated second grade teacher at Valencia Elementary. It is my understanding that Dr. Rodriguez has worked hard to represent our district in the meetings of superintendents that have occurred. Thank you for that, Dr. Rodriguez. As this week progressed and the absences with independent study requests arrived, my second grade colleagues and I took it upon ourselves without direction to develop a comprehensive differentiated offline and online curriculum to present our families through spring break. We prepared, printed, and distributed the offline portion of curriculum to our families today so that we could immediately support those kids without internet access. Individually labeled packets are waiting in the office for those kids who were absent Friday. We have already communicated with our families about our commitment to continually provide them via email and Google Classrooms with all of the information for various online learning opportunities, including specific targeted assignments on Google Classroom, Benchmark Advance, and Khan Academy. Now we're be we are being given a directive to work on site through a joint MOU with our union Monday through Wednesday in order to prepare long term learning for our students. I am told I can bring my own kids along so I don't have to get childcare. Why are you requiring teachers and perhaps our children to return to an environment that will not yet have been deep cleaned and disinfected? It is naive to think our classrooms are not exposed by now. I am absolutely disappointed that our individual well-being and the health of the greater community through potential exposure is being pushed aside. The CDC is instructing people to stay at home and avoid unnecessary interactions. That is exactly what I would like to do, especially when the required work needed to be completed requires nothing more than my focus, a laptop, and an internet connection. We are passionate, dedicated people who can absolutely be trusted to diligently work on our required tasks from home all week. I ask you to please consider this, reconsider this mandate and show us classroom teachers that you trust us and care us about us too. Did I already read a message from Deborah Mallard? From Karina Gomez. To whom it may concern, I'm an instructional assistant at one of our middle schools. 
what the school district is doing is simply outrageous. Most of the cases of COVID-19 who have tested positive have been adults. Three of those adults have been from our district PBSD. The district claims that the most important thing for them is keeping children and families in the community safe. PVUSD staff is also part of the community. It makes no sense to keep children at home but staff at work. If this happens, we will eventually expose each other with the virus and in turn expose our families at home. Please keep in mind that we have young children or family members with compromised immune systems. This could all be life-threatening. The district has the power to put a stop to it and help. From Jenny Reyna. Dear PVSD School Board, Thank you for taking the preventative measure of closing the schools in order to limit the spread of COVID-19 virus. I am asking, I'm writing to ask you to please allow staff to work from home next week. Many of us have began shifting our courses to online learning modalities and I do not feel it is all responsible or necessary for us to physically be on campus. The whole point of social distancing is to separate people from one another in order to limit possible exposure and decrease the chances of spreading the virus. By asking us to come to work, we are exposing ourselves once more to this potentially lethal virus. There are many teachers and staff in the district who are in the high-risk category, and this decision puts them especially at risk. In addition, many of us were, were, told not to bring, were told to bring our children to work if unable to find childcare, which most of us will not do, which although extremely generous, adds to the number of people on campus and decreases our ability to socially distance ourselves. Please put the health of the community and teachers first by allowing us to work from home next week. Thank you for your time and consideration. From Lilia Denovan. Hello everyone, I am an English teacher at Watsonville High. I would like to argue that the district's directive of moving to distance learning, including requiring teachers to collaborate on site for three days to plan, it is not feasible or equitable for high schools. My five key points are as follows. Ensuring that every PVSD household has consistent Wi-Fi is simply not feasible in exigent circumstances. Students will not have tech support for faulty Chromebooks and keyboard issues have run rampant this year. Many, teams, many teens will be assuming childcare responsibilities for siblings. In addition, each point one through three has potential to add stress to an already stressful time. Motivated students facing these barriers will despair about falling behind. Assignments completed off-site are essentially invalid for grading purposes. The first reason is plagiarism. The second half is there no way to determine who completed the work. The second is that SPED students and English learners will not have access to support and accommodations for totally independent work and yet will be accountable for it. Finally, classroom teachers are not specially trained in the delivery of online instruction. Recent shifts to emphasize student-centered activities, collaboration, and personalized learning have transformed many classrooms, and students and teachers alike are not trained and practiced in online equivalents. Though we often assume our digital native students are tech savvy, I can say from experience that they are not so with ed tech unless explicitly taught. Without that explicit teaching, the returns on the investment of our time and energy will be highly variable. Some teachers may be able to deliver distance learning and some students may be able to access it. Some will complete it and some will learn. Is our goal equitable opportunity to learn? Holding students and teachers accountable for work completed in an inherently inequitable, not to mention chaotic and stressful situation seems counter to our mission here in PBSD. Teachers should be remote to comply, work remotely to comply with best practices for slowing viral spread. We can provide a set of optimal enrichment opportunities via the Google Classroom. Students should be encouraged to access them. Neither should be in a tangled web of unreasonable expectations and inconsistent communication during a time of uncertainty and chaos. From Abel Fernandez. Having some time to disinfect our, home, our own homes, cars, clothes, and prepar preparing for a scenario that is not best case, and then coming to work and helping disinfect the school would be, in my, would be my opinion of helping keep the district as safe. From Samuel Stoddard. Dear partners in education, we are writing to communicate con some concerns that we have about the plans for our current health emergency. We understand that this is fam unfamiliar territory for everyone and want to make sure that you are aware of the issues on our site that our site and others are concerned about. We wanted to let you know that even with such short notice, Landmark staff worked very hard today to, to make sure that all students went home with both internet and traditional forms of work to keep them learning during the upcoming weeks. The students, there, 
is an equity issue as many of our students do not have access to devices and or reliable internet that would be necessary for distance learning. While some of our students have access to devices and classroom surveys, we have found that a significant number of these devices are only cell phones. Are these adequate for distance learning? We are concerned that hotspots will not provide adequate social distancing. Environmental issues. The schools will not be able to adequately cleaned and disinfected over the weekend to ensure a germ-free environment for teachers working on site. We still do not have the needed supplies to disinfect our classrooms. We are short custodians and the routine cleaning tasks such as emptying the garbage have not been completed. How is this going to be addressed? How can we work together to ensure that our students are still learning while we honor social distancing? We feel that this would be best accomplished by teachers working from home. Teachers with underlying health concerns as defined by the CDC and those who live with family members that are at risk are very concerned that working on site for even a few days will compromise their health or that of their families. The point of closure is to limit interaction in order to slow the, down the spreading of this virus. We feel that the responsible to solution to this situation would be to allow teachers to work from home starting on Monday, March 16th, 2020. From Araceli Lopez. With the rise is positive COVID-19 cases in the county, the purpose of the Santa Cruz County school closures is to avoid crowds due to the possible exposure to the virus. If staff having to bring their children to an unsanitized site where they will have contact with other children and staff, does this not defeat the purpose of avoiding contact for safety? As a staff member and single mother, I have no one to help care for my daughter during the school closure. My daughter has asthma, and as we are well aware, the COVID-19 has severe and many time fatal outcomes for individuals with underlying conditions. As a mother, I am not willing to risk taking my daughter with me to my work site and exposing her to other children and staff during this pandemic. From Gwen Berliner. Dear board members, when I read Dr. Rodriguez's letter last night, I was relieved to hear that the decision was made to close the schools next week. I figured this meant that all people who work in the schools would also get to benefit from social distancing. I was shocked to read this morning that it was just students who are staying home next week and staff members are expected to go to work. This does not seem to coincide with what scientists, world health officials, and doctors and nurses who are two weeks ahead of us facing this pandemic are recommending. For example, in a conference yesterday at the UCSF Medical Center, the doctor being interviewed stated that all people 60 years or older should stay at home. I am 59 years old, but I live with my husband who is nine years older than me and has asthma. If I get, get sick, it is possible that my husband will also get sick. All of your letters start by stating that you are concerned about the safety and wellness of all students, families, and school personnel. This is yet this does not jive with your decision to keep schools open for personnel next week. This disease is spread from person to person, and it seems that one person who has a confirmed positive diagnosis with coronavirus is a teacher. Thus, it is evident that more and more teachers will spread the disease to each other if they are in contact with each other. Teachers spend 77% of their waking day at school working. If they do not have to be in contact with each other, that could reduce our daily exposure by 77%. The coronavirus is starting to decline in China. They are taking much more drastic social distancing steps. Doctors and nurses from Italy are sending dispatches begging us to reconsider what our positive case rate will look like two weeks from now. We need to make decisions that will slow the spread of this illness to give health officials time to react. Please rethink your decision today. Thank you. From Nerissa Graydon. Dear school board, I am baffled by the decision to require teachers to report to their classrooms on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. This is grossly irresponsible in the face of a pandemic. We are closed for the purpose of student health, but it is compulsory for staff to report to potentially contaminated classrooms. My husband is a teacher in the Campbell Union High School District, and his school is closed for one month, and he is not required to step foot on campus. Frankly, this is disrespectful. This is a disrespectful, petty move that will potentially add to the already climbing number of cases in Santa Cruz County. As teachers, we are able and willing to provide online assignments for our students. Our students will not benefit from their teachers being on campus when they are not there. So what exactly is being gained by putting all PVSD teachers in harm's way? Please do the responsible thing, put health, health first, and reconsider this decision. From Holly Ota. Thank you for having complied so prudently with the Santa Cruz County Public Health Officer's Directive regarding preventative practices to quell the spread of coronavirus. I am certain that PVSD families are very relieved. 
I would like to encourage you to afford teachers an equal opportunity to demonstrate best practices regarding public health safety so as to not further spread infection. Please allow us to remain at home and continue to give our students the excellent attention and instruction that we provide every other day of the year. At such an unpredictable time, we are all facing many challenges. Flexibility from all sides will help us be successful in both meeting curricular demands and in keeping public health in mind. My personal situation is such that my husband will not be reporting to work at Cisco Systems till at least March 23rd because two employees were diagnosed with COVID-19. He is voluntarily remaining in our house as much as possible and is 62 years old. Our younger daughter was informed last evening that her LA area college suddenly halted classroom instruction for the remainder of the semester. We are driving down and back up on Sunday to move her home. As things stand, I am expected to be in a mandatory staff meeting at 7.30 on Monday morning. I am concerned about how I will maintain my general health. I am nearing ex exhaustion because I continue to prioritize delivering comprehensive and compassionate instruction to my students. I have always worked this way, worked many hours from home and on the sidelines of volleyball tournaments far and wide because I am a passionate about my work and meeting my students' needs. Please support me and the many dedicated professionals throughout our district in doing our best work in the most safe environments possible. Respectfully, Holly Oda. From Ioana Martinez. My anxiety is seriously through the roof after hearing about the COVID-19 pandemic occurring all around us, especially being a pregnant employee. We get told that schools will be closed for the safety of public and children. I was thinking that would mean employees too. The people who have tested positive for COVID-19 are adults. How does it make sense to send kids home but keep the adults physically in close contact with one another in schools? With a scarcity of tests for this virus and some individuals not showing symptoms until days, sometimes even weeks later, how can we know for certain that going to work is safe for us employees? From uh, Janice Jimenez. We hope this finds you well. We were recently informed that we might be able to submit a question and are hoping this is indeed the case. So the questions are, how many cases of COVID-19 have tested positive that are directly related to Rio Del Mar Elementary? Can you share the nature of the relation with the school, the positive cases held, what grades, ages, students did they associate with? We are asking this as we work directly with 80 students from Rio Del Mar at our two after-school enrichment programs, Magic, after, uh, Magic Apple After School, grades two through six, and Apple After School, grades K through one. We would be devastated if we were unknowingly contributing to the spread of the virus. Will there be testing available for any Rio staff and community programs such as ours that work directly with uh, Rio de Mar PBSD students if it becomes needed? What steps would we take? Thank you, board members, for all you are doing for our students and their faculties at this difficult time. From Margarita Reventos. My name is Margarita Reventos from Lakeview Middle School. Thank you for the opportunity for, to share my concerns regarding this unprecedented, unpredictable pandemic. I am in complete agreement with closing schools to slow the spread of COVID-19. It is the right thing to do for our students and the community as a whole. However, asking teachers and staff to return to a potentially contaminated environment is senseless. Even if you were to deep clean, if one teacher is a carrier for COVID-19, the risk of contamination is still present. Additionally, suggesting the teachers bring their own children to school can potentially spread COVID-19, which is what you're attempting to slow down. I urge the board to allow teachers and staff to work from home. We are responsible, dedicated professionals. Please treat us as, as such. Your support for teachers is support for students. From Zulema Perez. As a district employee, I am very concerned with the outcomes of the COVID-19 virus. Many of us have family members at home we are wanting to keep safe, and I feel that we are all exposing ourselves by maintaining contact among each other within the school sites this coming week. How are we keeping this very contagious virus from spreading if we are expected to come to work and have contact with other staff members, as well as possibly exposing our children by having to bring them to work with us? At this point, we don't even know for certain if more of us have been exposed to this virus, and it worries me that we may be putting ourselves at risk of infection by going to our school sites and being in contact with other staff members. Thank you for listening. Elida Guerrero. My name is Elida Guerrero and I have worked for the district for more than 15 years. Currently I am teaching second grade at Freedom Elementary. I really care for my students and community. 
I also have a child who attends the school district. I want you to know that I am really upset with the current choices that have been decided in the school district. The school, dis the school district claims that the safety and wellness of our students, families, and school personnel are the highest priorities of all Santa Cruz County schools and districts. And yet, and well, it doesn't feel that way. Why are they making certi certified and classified even after school personnel go to work next week when the school is closed down? The district claims that they, are, they received the first confirmed COVID case of COVID-19 at Rio del Mar Elementary School in their letters and post, and now there are seven confirmed cases in Santa Cruz. This virus is extremely close. The district mentioned that the most effective way to slow down and disrupt the transmission of the pandemic is by implementing social distancing practices. Then why are they making us leave our home and go to work where there are about 60 employees at our school sites and say that we could bring our children to work if necessary? I thought we were implementing distance practices. The district mentioned mentioned that during the time of closure, we are asking students and families to follow county public officers' directive to stay home and minimize social contact to the extent possible. But what about our families? I am frustrated and disgusted at the point I will have to keep my children at home and I will have to report to work leaving my family at home when there is imminent danger around us and I could pick up the virus on the way to work uh, or at work and take it back to my family. I thought we were supposed to stay at home and distance ourselves from people and stop the transmission of this deadly virus and keep families united, but this is exactly the opposite of what the district is asking us to do. Please consider our families as well and help the teachers and staff stay united with their families at home and stop the transmission of this pandemic. Why would we have to expose ourselves? Why can't our staff just distance ourselves, be united with our families, and keep our families safe at the same as everyone else? I am very concerned with the welfare and safety of our school staff. Thank you for your time and consideration. from Kim Saldavia. Dear Board of Trustee members, the COVID-19 is a crisis of enormous scale and human impact, the likes of which we have not seen in our lifetimes. This is of a difficult time and there are many opinions on how we should proceed with in Pajaro Valley USD. Our district leadership decision making should have the health and safety of our students, families, and community as the highest priority. Given the recommendations from the CDC, CDE, and D DPH, five of the largest districts, Los Angeles, Fresno, Long Beach, and San Diego have closed. Our first week of closure should be for our staff and families to make plans for their health and safety, not for district employees to continue to work without students. We must also learn and share information with and from other districts. I have attached an informative sheet for parents from San Figuito USD, where my nieces and uh, attend school. Now is not the time for teachers to make classroom packets, create online curriculum, or provide services or support to our special education students. These are unprecedented times. Please look at the facts of this virus. There are There is one simple thing we can do that works, social distancing. There is one way to truly reduce social distancing. Keep people home as much as possible until this recedes. Our efforts now must be aimed at preventing its spread through our district and community. This will not work if PVSD employees are required to return to work next week with their children in tow. From Jessica Chavez. As a member of the public and a school employee here in Santa Cruz County, I feel that COVID-19 has caused a great deal of anxiety for us all this past week. There is no denying that this virus is contagious. Just last weekend, we had our first confirmed case here in Santa Cruz County, and we have had seven confirmed COVID-19 cases since then. Working in a SELPA classroom with many other adults present, I am worried that if we are to report to our sites and have to come in contact with other staff members, who we have no history of knowing who they may have been in contact with prior, we are putting ourselves at risk of infection. It is easy to isolate ourselves in our homes and have personal control over who we may choose to come in contact with outside of work. However, as of right now, I personally do not feel safe, and I would like to know how we can be guaranteed our health safety while we attend our work sites. From Stephanie Hedgepeth Lopez. Please reconsider having staff report to sites. The message you are sending to staff by asking students and parents to stay home but for staff to continue to attend is that their health and well-being are not important. If there is enough reason to close the schools, they should be closed to allow, closed to all, to allow the health benefits of closure to reach the full potential to contain this virus. Staff have already considered continuing students' education options for those lucky enough to have devices and internet. These can be implemented remotely just as easily from home. This is a stressful time for all of us. Don't add to it. From Myra Bernabe. 
My name is Myra Bernabe, a resident and aunt to students at Landmark, McQuitty, Lakeview, and Watsonville High, and I'm a friend to many teachers and staff throughout PUVUSD. First, I'd like to say that I truly appreciate your leadership to take action and preventative measures by closing the schools. I applaud you for providing food distribution school sites throughout the county for our children, as many of them greatly depend on these meals. It is in moments like these that we all need to be creative and support each other, so thank you. With the school closures comes other concerns. One of those was food access, which is handled. The other concern is technology access for our children who will need to continue their studies to complete homeworks, but don't have internet or technology access at home. What will you do about this? And what will parents who will still have to work but now need childcare? Are there any partnerships being discussed about helping in this matter? Additionally, I am concerned with the requirement that teachers and staff will still physically remain working in schools, further increasing the risk to potentially be exposed to the virus. I understand these are difficult times and moments of uncertainty, but we must be smart and take all of the precautionary measures necessary to contain and not further leak the virus. As you may already know, adults and older age children are much more vulnerable to catch the virus. Older age people are much more vulnerable to catch the virus than children. It makes no sense to remove children from schools, but not the adults. Please make the right decision and be part of the solution of full-on COVID-19 containment by not requiring staff and teachers to physically remain working at schools. Thank you. From PathStar, there is so much fear and so little known about this pandemic. It is urgent that we do what we can to stop the spread of the disease. All know that we, all that we know from China and South Korea is that social distancing works. Please do not ask your staff to endanger themselves in our community by showing up at school next week. We all need to be able to stay at home to keep ourselves and our community safe. If there are urgent matters that need to be addressed, perhaps they could be handled by volunteers from a broad community outreach. Thank you for considering my res res request. from Veronique Marx. I have been a teacher at PVUSD for over 20 years. I want to thank you for your forward thinking and proactiveness in closing schools to try and slow down and get ahead of the COVID-19 virus. These are definitely uncharted territories and I know we are all doing the best we can given the scenario. I am asking that you allow the staff the option to work from home rather than coming to school next week. We are fortunate to live in an age where we can pre prepare for distance learning, communicate with each other, and build quality lessons for our students while working from home. Many teachers, myself included, are parents of kids in the school system. The idea of bringing kids to school despite the school closures is irresponsible and defeats the purpose of social distancing. Districts are asking parents and students to stay home and avoid public areas, yet our school district is telling us it's okay to bring our kids to work. I feel discriminated against just because I am a parent. I cannot in good conscience Subject my children to this and will have to take a sick leave in order to stay home with my children. I do not have family in town and have no possible way to find child care coverage. Please consider allowing staff to work from home next week, especially those that are parents or at high risk. Thank you for your consideration in this matter. From Diane Block. I just finished reading an article titled Social Distancing, this is, now, this is Not a Snow Day. This article explains the points about social distancing I raised. Did I read a letter from Diane Block already? But she sent a couple of them. Yeah, she read oh, okay. There was one but I think, I, I think I'm only reading this one. Okay, I think this is the revised one. Diane, I apologize if I'm, I'm going to read the one that I had starred for you. The author says we are only 11 days behind Italy and generally on track to repeat what is unfortunately happening there and throughout the rest of the Europe very soon. Here it is that we must move through pandemic mitigation, um, through widespread uncomfortable and comprehensive social distancing. That means not only shutting down schools, work as much as possible, group gatherings and public events, but also making daily choices to stay away from each other as much as possible to flatten the curve so that new cases are within the capacity of healthcare system. He's talking about aggressive early and extreme social distancing, not going to a staff meeting at 9 a.m. Monday morning with 30 colleagues, then work in your classroom until you meet again for lunch social distancing. He adds that we are trying to create distance between family units and between individuals. Even, as, even if you choose only one friend to have over, you are creating links and possibilities for the type of transmission that all our school work but public events closures are trying to prevent. The symptoms of coronavirus take four to five days to manifest themselves. Someone who is who comes over looking well can transmit the virus. 
I urge each of you to read this article, in particular study the graph showing a model of cumulative cases of coronavirus with social distancing measures taken one day apart, illustrating a predicted 40% increase in cumulative cases. PVSD is asking staff to work on site three days next week. We have been told we are required to attend work unless we are already showing symptoms of the virus. Despite the union's direction that this is not a time for staff meetings, we're already receiving emails telling staff to meet Monday morning for a staff meeting. There are at least 30 staff members at my site, and our staff room is not big enough for us to all allow to sit six feet apart. This is not aggressive, early, and extreme social distancing, and it jeopardizes our entire community and beyond. I appeal to you to change the directive we received today and shift to remote work guidelines. I have an in-person public comment from Richard Martinez. Go ahead and come on up. Okay, there we go. CSEA is requesting the trustee from the trustees and the districts to shut down for at least two weeks for no one to be on campus at all to keep all employees clear from work and furthermore how can we have a hired a hazmat company to come in and do the cleaning for us for unskilled and untrained people for this our custodians are doing this work it isn't right second of all the president did release funds for things like this and also to cover wages. So let's look further more into it and let's do the right thing for our people, our community. Thank you. From Gina Deshera. Dear trustees, it makes no sense whatsoever to oblige teachers to work from potentially contaminated work sites to create virtual lessons. It defies logic. I know the custodians are shorthanded and do not work on Saturdays and Sundays. Why sit in a possibly dangerous, contaminated environment to create virtual lessons and risk prolonging this closure? All of the teachers at my school, Lakeville Middle School, already use Google Classroom to post lessons. All of the students have Chromebooks. We can be monitored by our site administrators for posting lessons materials virtually. It is dangerous and unsound to require us to return to the work sites before they have been thoroughly sanitized. This illogical demand demonstrates once again how little respect, confidence, and trust the PVSD administration has for our teachers. Moreno Valley Unified has the same insane idea to require teachers to work from school sites, but luckily their county office overturned this poor decision. I hope you can do the same. I am truly disappointed in our leadership, and it closed, and hope that you adjust. This letter is from Karen Richmond, a teacher at Valencia. My name is Karen Richmond, and I am a committed and dedicated kindergarten teacher at Valencia Elementary. I understand we are in uncharted waters, but all the more reason for making astute decisions based on fact, scientific guidance, and simple common sense. The memorandum of understanding that was signed today baffles me. While I always appreciate an effort to compromise the issue of the health, always appreciate an effort to compromise, the issue of the health and safety of our staff members was sorely overlooked. Superintendent Colleen noted in her email today that school closures will allow us to implement social distancing protocols not possible with student present, students present. The union emphasized the importance of students having the opportunity for off-site learning, yes, important. But neither of these declarations take into account that this virus didn't leave campus with our students. It has been documented by federally funded research that this particular virus can live for a minimum of two to three days on hard surfaces. Monday morning would be two days, because we all know it is extremely unlikely that the virus has infiltrated all our school environments and janitors will not have had the time to, at the very least, spray down the surfaces in all classrooms and common rooms for Monday morning. Why are we not taking the extra precaution to stay away for at least three more days? Dr. Rodriguez, in a response letter to me today, said that the action being taken at Rio won't be taken at another site until a confirmed case is documented. I am shocked to hear of this complacent reactive response policy. I have been told that the child of the person who tested positive at Rio attends Valencia's TK class. How can you and or the health department justify waiting for another positive case to appear at a particular site before taking the health and safety precautions for staff members? I, for one, am just over 60 and was out for a week with a debilitating case of pneumonia for just last month. 
We have other staff members in the same category. The only reason given for teachers mandated to return on work Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is to grade level prep off-site learning materials for, for students. What if we already took the initiative to provide our students with more than two weeks of off-site learning? I am asking for a serious reconsideration of the MOU signed today to reflect the actual realities on the ground. Thank you and address for addressing my concerns by answering my questions. From Aniele Diaz Soto, in light of the recent e events, the school closure is good to keep our students safe. With that being said, I am wondering why PVSD staff members need to report to their school site. At my site, various departments are to report to the cafeteria for trainings. This is an opposite of what CD is CDC is recommending us to do. We will be within three feet of each other. Is there a way we can work from home? If so, can you let me know? From Cameron Cowan. Hello, my name is Cameron, and my girlfriend works for PVUSD at Calabasas Elementary. She has been worried sick about the health of her students in the face of COVID-19 and was happy to hear that the schools had closed next week to protect them. However, I am now outraged that you, the board, and concerned for her safety, that she is being required to come to work at a school that still has yet to be cleaned. You, the board members, are making it very obvious to others that you don't care about teachers and their families' safety at all. Please do not require teachers to come into school and risk getting not only her sick, but in turn myself and our whole household. Please do the right thing and let teachers work from home. From Lisa Keller. Please allow all PVUSD employees to work remotely starting Monday, March 16th. By all employees, I mean every single employee, classified, certificated, admin, district level, etc. Teachers, school counselors, admin, and other employees are all professional working adults who can safely work, work remotely during this closure. Thank you. From Kist Christy Hadland. It has come to my attention that you're having teaching staff come into work. While I understand the possible reasons, I don't think you're cl thinking clearly on this. We need a total shutdown in order to slow the spread of COVID-19 disease. I don't care if it's hype or not. Safety is better than attending mass funerals. Who cares about money? We can freaking make more, but we can't replace the humans that in reality could get very ill and possibly die. So I ask you this, what will it take for you, the system, to take this seriously? No one should be in public places for at least this next week. Reassess every week. Tell your staff they can't leave the area in case you need to bring them back to work ASAP. Lastly, many of your staff have children now at home and possibly unsupervised. Do you really think that's what's in the best interest of your staff or our children who are possibly frightened by all of this? I know my 12-year-old quite worried now every time I step out of the house. Use some common sense. Give staff at least 316 to 20 off. Sanitize the schools and reevaluate after 320. Thank you. I can only know as a mom and worker myself that this is all a huge burden, and I too am losing income and time, but I have my health and so does my family, and that's priceless. priceless. From Syra Hirji. <coughs> Hello, members of the school board. My name is Syra, and I am a teacher at WHS. I realize this is a confusing time for all of us, and that includes you and your own families. We are in uncharted territory. I would like to start by saying that I appreciate the assurance that teachers and staff will continue to be paid and receive insurance benefits during the school closure. It was weighing heavily on me as I have a baby and am currently barely making ends meet even with my full pay. Next, I would like to share some of my, my concerns. My concern is in being asked to come into work next week, Monday through Wednesday. I realize that the school was closed in order to prevent the spread of the virus and thus we do not have any confirmed cases at our school. However, most people who are sick are not being tested. That means that my colleagues who are sick either risk losing sick days or pay if they, like me, do not have sick days, or will feel that they have no choice but to come in, even if it means infecting others. We will also be in our classrooms with materials that have been touched by hundreds of potentially sick students. I do understand the need to create distance learning plans for our students, but it seems like this could be more safely done from our homes. I and the colleagues I have spoken with are happy to work from home where we can practice social distancing and it seems like there is not an actual purpose to having us all attend campus in person. It makes all of us feel very undervalued when you are willing to unnecessarily put our health at risk. We have been there at school for the students every day, but now students are working from home and we should be there too starting Monday, not Thursday. 
Lastly, I would like you to consider the same for the classified staff. What is the purpose of having an instructional assistant or behavior tech come to work when they have no students to work with? Please show us you value your educators and make our health a priority. We can educate the students while remaining safe. Thank you for your time. From Mark Drury. With a recently declared national emergency and countywide school closures, it is short-sighted and reckless to expect teachers and staff to show up at their sites on Monday. There is no logical reason to further risk the health of PVSD employees, our families, and the community at large. I expect the vast majority of teachers can prep, prep from remote learning off-site and coordinate via email, text, and phone. Over the past 48 hours, literally every local group and community organization I am part of has shut down completely. At this point, it is quite clear that avoiding non-essential travel and interaction with the public is key to fighting the spread of COVID-19. To my knowledge, not a single staff member at my site has been tested, and we have staff who are highly at risk due to age, compromised immune systems, etc. We have several staff members who live out of the county and or have children to care for. Why on earth would we further risk our health by meeting in person? We need to honor the severity of this crisis and do our part minimizing the effects. No one aside from cleaning crews should be at school sites unless it is, until it is safe for everyone to return. Keep the teachers and staff home and safe. It's just not worth the risk. Thank you. From Alexandria Wilson. I would like to just, I would like at least to just point out the sheer hypocrisy of the fact that you are all practicing social distancing currently for this board meeting but not allowing the public to attend, yet you expect teachers and other employees to risk their own health and safety by all returning to their sites to do planning that could easily be done from home. We are expected to plan for distance learning in the following week. What you don't understand is that most teachers have already done this in a mad dash during school hours on Friday in order to send students home with some work. What is the plan for students without access to technology? How will paper copies provided by the district be delivered to students now that they already have left? How are we ensuring this work gets done and enforced by parents? How thoughtful of you to allow us to bring our own children into our, our work sites that have not yet been properly sanitized, cleaned yet. I will not be bringing my one-year-old into my Jeremy classroom. I will not get any worse, useful work done with her there anyways. At least from home, I can work and keep my daughter safe in a familiar environment. I really hope you reconsider some of these ideas and policies you are putting into place. Look at what is happening in the world around us. Be flexible, and this is beyond our control. And what we need to be doing is put the, putting the health and safety of all, including staff members, first, like you said you would. Fifth grade teacher at Calabasas. From Rebecca Berryman. My name is Becca, and I am a teacher at Calabasas. I am writing to you today for two reasons. First, I would like to thank you for closing the schools to protect our students and their families. Um, I'm also writing to urge you to think about how the teachers now and their families. Day in and day out, I sacrifice my sanity, free time, and health because I truly love my students. However, there becomes a point when I must think about the health of myself and my family. Closing the schools but requiring teachers to come is unbelievable. I have spoken to multiple janitors at my school, and they have confirmed that my school is yet to be cleaned at all, and yet here we are being required to be there. You yourselves are practicing social distancing by not allowing people to come to the meeting today for public comment, yet teachers and staff have to be thrown into the germ classrooms this week. Please make the right decision and keep all of us safe in the middle of this deadly pandemic by letting us work from home. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Bishop and I teach at Aptos Junior where we have had to face the reality of what a global pandemic has struck not just too close to home but in a school in our little community. You too are part of this community and I am sure you are concerned about your loved ones and the impact this will have on our families. I am writing with high hopes that our PVSD community can face this unprecedented event with unity, equity and trust. First is the directive to be on site Monday through Wednesday also include all employees who work at the district office and county offices. Are they to bring their children at work with them as well? If so, this does not seem like a prudent measure of social distancing and only brings more people into an enclosed area. If district and county office staff are not required to be on site, then this is not equitable. Second, you, can you be sure that the staff with close proximity to the Rio de Mar case do not pose a risk to others? Are there staff members who are currently in self-quarantine waiting for symptoms or testing? I am aware of at least one. It was upsetting to be required to work yesterday under the premise that students were coming to gather materials. Half of my students were absent, and I subbed during the, my prep and the copy machine was out of toner, so this notion that teachers could be able to quickly throw something together is ridiculous and insulting, and not only puts us and our students at risk. 
Furthermore, there seems to be an unfortunate mistrust of teachers working from home. This is utterly ironic because we teachers work from home every evening and weekend, and no one seems to question that. In fact, before the closure, I had plans to bring home work this weekend, as I usually do, despite our PVFT decision to work to rule. PVSD teachers do not work to rule, even when we say we are. We, are already, we already perform remote planning and learning from home 100%, 110% of the time. We are all in every day, even when we, after we leave our sites and even during a pandemic. Our other districts that have closed require their teachers to be on site. We can work from home until we know for certain that there will, be not, there will not be community spread from the Rio case. It is too soon to know. Please trust us and ultimately unite us by putting our health and safety first. Thank you. Angelica Flores. My name is Angelica Flores and I'm a school counselor at Cesar Chavez. Thank you for working har hard during this rapidly evolving pandemic. I would like to share as to why coming in next week puts us all at risk, especially those with family members who have weak immune systems. I have a daughter who recently had liver surgery and her immune system is weak. For me to be exposed to any virus and bring her home, bring it home to her is not safe at all. I also can't bring her to work with me because of an exposure to this virus. I can't call in sick as I already used up most of my sick days during her surgery and recovery. The sick days I do have left are saved for appointments to Stanford. If the well-being of your staff and is your number one priority, please consider keeping all staff home. No one should be risking their health and the health of others when we can work remotely from home. Please consider keeping us all home. From Elizabeth Edinger. I have concerns about bringing our most vulnerable members of our district to work sites. The spread of a pandemic can override the medical infrastructure causing unnecessary deaths. Our school system needs to provide tech, hotspots, meals, and materials for distance learning for up to a month. We need to empower our teachers to be flexible and innovate, innovative in organizing curriculum for our students. Please allow staff to work remote if possible, limit their time on sites, and allow support staff to do assignments, other assignments or trainings remotely. Governor Newsom secured funding for all our public schools at this time, and let's be flexible and innovative in how we continue to educate and support our students. And there is a link to uh, Governor Newsom's executive order. From Edith Ruiz. Did I read from Edith Ruiz? No, no okay. Dear partners in education, we are writing to communicate some concerns we have about the plans for our current health emergency. We understand that this, I think I read this letter though. Yeah. Yeah. It talks about the risks to the students and the environmental issues. Yes. Okay. From Karen Primavera. Dear board members, I am writing to you in hopes that you will listen to the fear and outrage that many fellow teachers are experiencing at this time. Although we appreciate the fact that schools have been closed for a week to monitor the safety and well-being of the staff and students, having teachers come to work on Monday is a complete hypocrisy to that notion. Our school has still not implemented any of the correct cleaning or sanitizing protocols that were supposed to begin a week ago. This not only puts teachers in direct danger, it then puts their immediate family in danger. There are many of us who are caring for our elderly parents at home or nearby, and we do not want to put them at greater risk than they already are. The majority of us also have our own spouse, partners, and children at home due to other school closures who are terrified that we are asked to return to a non-sanitized environment. Lastly, the government has repeatedly asked us to practice the guidelines of social distancing, and by requiring all staff to return on Monday, you are going against that protocol. I urge you to allow teachers and staff to work from home during this time of uncertainty, and I implore you to make all schools and janitorial crews have been all schools janitorial crews have been properly trained and performed the, the necessary cleaning before permitting anyone back on campus. Thank you for your consideration. From Kathy Keenan. I'm deeply concerned that PVSD is requiring its teachers to work in schools next week. The adults are at greatest risk from COVID-19, not the children, and the schools have not been sanitized. They are not allowed to bring, they are allowed to bring their children to unsanitized facilities. Given the nature of teaching, there is absolutely no reason they have to physically be in the school building. To do so expresses them, exposes them to unnecessary risk. Further, a one-week closure of the schools is not going to be adequate to staunch the contagion. 
countries such as Singapore and Japan, which have done exemplary jobs of containing the spread of the disease, closed schools instantly for 30 days. I am very disappointed that PVSD isn't doing everything in its power to protect students and teachers. I am very happy about the meals program, however. That is very well done. Thank you. Regards, excuse me. From Simona C. Gerios. I work at Hall District Elementary in Los Lomas, North Monterey County. My conflict is my mother is 89 years old, which puts her in the highest risk group for the disease, COVID-19, and I am the closest family member who cares for her. I cannot risk exposing her to the coronavirus. I am not trying to get out of work, as those of you who know me know how hard I work for the students in my community. I am only asking for alternative to going into work. Can distance planning be set up so that the teachers in my situation may protect our loved elders who are in the highest risk group for death from the COVID-19 disease? Thank you for your time and understanding. From Jillian Reeves. Why are we getting so many contradictory messages from you all? You want social distancing, but then ask us to have staff meetings. A staff member at Lambark is being tested, and a staff member at Rio del Mar is infected. How many people did they infect before getting tested? I really hate pointless things like coming to a dirty campus to work on distance learning. We are teachers in the 21st century. Literally everything we could possibly need is online. The only reason for coming to campus is to be babysat, which is absolutely insulting us, insulting as prof a professional adult. If you want to control and babysit us so bad, use an online tool to monitor our work. You have all shown how selfish and uncaring you all are. Oh, and did I mention I am pregnant, so I have much more time, I have much more to think about than just me. After this year, I am done. I will be looking elsewhere for a job. As a classified person, I'm allowed to use my sick leave days for next week. I feel strongly about my safety, and also feel, I feel the days I accumulated are mine to use in this time of need. Did I say her name? Lupe Duran. Ava Klein. To the board. I am extremely concerned about teachers needing to be at work sites on Monday, March 16th. The children are less susceptible to be coming gravely ill from this virus, whereas teachers and staff are more susceptible to becoming dangerously ill. There are teachers in sensitive groups with greater risk of becoming. Teachers who has immune issues or a history of asthma or a history of pneumonia should not be forced to use sick leave in order to protect themselves at this time. We need to work together to prioritize the health and wellness of every individual within our schools and our community. Please take the teacher's well-being into greater consideration. We teachers take care of the children. Now do your part to take care of us. Thank you. from Jessica Corona. I am Mrs. Corona. In this public health situation, at first it was a funny, unfortunate coincidence to be a teacher with that name. Mentioning my name is just the hook, the same thing I teach my fifth graders to do to get the reader's attention. You've heard the multi multitude of pleas, and I want, you, I want to add that you, that you apply your own advice to protect our valuable staff. Another important writing skill is providing and citing text evidence. As stated in the Santa Cruz COE's March 12th letter, which was sent to all PVUSD staff, it states that the most effective way to slow and disrupt the transmission of this pandemic is by implementing social distancing practices. Requiring PVUSD staff to be on site the week of March 16th to 20th does not follow this guideline. Lastly, a valuable writing skill is to be able to associate the writer to the main idea using a personal connection. My husband is a San Jose fire captain, and two days ago on March 12th, a member of his crew tested positive for COVID-19. All of the crew members and all shift members in the San Jose Fire Station are self-monitoring as recommended by the Santa Clara Co County Office of Public Health Officer. All family members, including me, are doing the same. We provide care and live with my 89-year-old father who has congestive heart failure. No, I am not cueing the violins for sympathy, but appealing to your sense of duty. Ultimately, Mrs. Corona will do what is best for her family, and I ask that you do the same, but with your added power and responsibility, your first priority is to keep our PVSD families safe. From Laura Zucker. The U.S. News and World Report reported this last night at 11.40 p.m. The California Teachers Association, the largest teachers union, 
the state's largest teachers union, late Friday called for the closure of all public schools. Why is our sister union stating this? We know that Monterey schools are closing until March 31st. This makes real sense as 14 days is the number we keep hearing from medical sources about incubation and quarantine times. Symptoms may appear 2 to 14 days after exposure. Students required under precautionary quarantine for 14 days upon return. Sorry for the lousy formatting of quotes and sources. I went to school yesterday but seem to have caught whatever my husband has, so my mind isn't that clear. However, let's truly use an abundance of care and truly shut down the district schools now until the end of March. Duncan Holbit teachers counted up the number of children that would be at their school if all staff brought their families to site. It would be 30 kids. So how is that a school closure? Many of the teacher parents at my schools do not want to bring their children to a school that is closed for health reasons. This must be true at many sites. Will our sites be safe for the students after a two to five day semi-closure? We want our district to truly clean and quarantine our schools so that after this time, 14 days minimum, we can all come back and be safe. Thank you. From Peggy Mena. Dear Ms. Holm, board members and district staff, I am working remotely from home to let you know that there is a global pandemic called the coronavirus or COVID-19. It is spread through community contact and is highly contagious. It is particularly dangerous for older adults. Social distancing is one of the primary ways to slow the spread of the disease. Given the widespread coverage of this pandemic, I thought everyone was aware of the situation, but when I learned that teachers are mandated to return to work on Monday, I wondered if you had heard of the coronavirus. Teachers come into close contact with dozens of students and staff. The opportunity for community spread in our school district is of course magnified by teachers' close proximity to students and to each other. The World Health Organization has asked people to care for themselves and their community by staying home. I hope you will follow their lead and act ethically in the face of this deadly illness. Thank you for your time and responsible consideration of this serious matter. From Ruby Vasquez. Hello, please explain why some districts do not want their teacher staff reporting to work during a quarantine and ours does. Why was PVFT not invited to the meetings conducted at the DO yesterday. At the first meeting, I attended the first one. Why wasn't the 50 plus rule applied? The boardroom had much more than 50 people. I left because of that, and to be honest, most of the information I heard while there could have been all written up. Will it be? If so, by when and where will it be kept? Also, will all of us at the DO be notified of the results of the person Yeah, I, I'm a little worried about privacy. Yeah, yeah. I would, I would like to know if we at the district office are in jeopardy due to the situation. From Nick Oliver. Thank you for taking this preventative measure in closing our schools for one week. However, as a parent of a student in the district, we are concerned that one week is not enough. Other school districts in the state have been closed for at least two to four weeks. If the district plans to shut down for longer, then parents should be given more advanced notice. In regards to cleaning and disinfecting the schools, please keep in mind any and all items a student or staff member touches throughout the day. Not only desktops and doorknobs, but chairs, cabinets, light switches, toilet stalls, water fountains, garbage cans, recycle bins, Playground structures and PE equipment, pencil sharpeners, rails, cubbies, all technology equipment, remotes, microphones, headphones, document cameras, Chromebooks, and Chrome carts. Also, how is it being determined that sites are thoroughly cleaned, cleaned thoroughly, and that there are no missed items or classrooms being missed? Thank you for your consideration and your proactive approach. From Jenna Norville, um, word is swirling on social media that there are teachers testing positive for COVID-19. So why would teachers be required to work this next week and likely the next few weeks? Thank you for making the decision to close all schools and protect our children, but our treasured teachers need to be protected also. Many teachers have children, so it only makes sense to stay home together. From Francesca uh, Canino, 
My name is Francesca, and I'm a third grade teacher at Calabasas. We're almost done, by the way. I am writing you today for two reasons. First, I would like to thank you for closing the schools to protect our students and their families. However, I am also writing to urge you to think about how the teachers now and their families. Our classrooms have not been cleaned. How can I go back into my classroom that is filthy? Not only have you not cleaned our classrooms, but you have removed cleaning supplies we have purchased. Please respect us to let us stay home and protect our families. The only way to help prevent this virus is from zero contact. From Laura Feistel. Good morning. I am concerned, as we all are, about the ramifications of this virus. I am primary person responsible for my mom, who is 87, and so in the high-risk category for COVID-19. For this reason, I am concerned about having to report to the school site at this time. Please consider us letting, letting us work from home. From Teresa T. This is the same logic the Trump administration used when banning travel from UK, exempting Americans as if they were immune to getting or spreading the virus. Us teachers are not immune and should not be gathering, period. From Ricardo Reyes. Good morning, board and admin. My name is Ricardo Reyes, and I am a fourth grade teacher at Starlight Elementary School. I have been in the district for about 18 years. To begin, I have seen many great colleagues come and go due to our low pay and the way we are treated when it comes to contract talks. All we teachers want is a fair contract, but the bigger problem we are facing right now is COVID-19. We might be facing what Italy is facing soon. It was the right to call to cancel school this week, but it was the wrong call to make teachers and others come to school this same week. Kind of ironic to limit social distancing practice than you want us to meet as teachers in meeting where we will not be implementing social gathering. We are being told to have kids stay away, but then we can bring our own kids to school. I am not comfortable bringing my kid to school, not myself being at school during this time. Again, we don't if any of us is carrying or passing on the virus. The Rio de Mar situation was not handled the best in my eyes. The person, you know, many contacts with PVSD workers, students, and staff before they were identified. Why are other places saying home from saying work from home, but you are telling us to come to work? I know many other teachers at school feel the same way. They nor I not want the school this week. We would rather from home and follow the protocol of social distancing from hike. And from Edith Ruiz, ah, this is uh, uh, this is also the letter um, talking about the different the students and the environmental issues, and that was the last one. Thank you very much for reading all those emails. Thank you everybody who sent emails in before nine o'clock. Um, to continue with our discussion, um, and Trustee Acosta. Yeah, I'd like to um, actually make. Uh, a quick statement before I speak on what has brought all, us all here today. Um, I encourage everyone, all of you, to listen very carefully to the comments of all of your trustees. Watch our actions carefully. Understand who is acting responsibly in protecting the health of our students, teachers, staff, and in doing so, the larger extended community of <coughs> parents, babies, grandparents, in the PVUSD, Watsonville, Coralitas, Aptos, La Selva Beach, Pajaro, and Los Lomas areas. Trustees were elected to represent the people. Watch and listen to our positions carefully. In such, I am really baffled that it took President Dodge having to call it an emergency meeting to get us here um, to discuss what we need to do going forward. It is very clear that based on CDC guidelines, the World Health Organization's guidelines, the directive from Governor Newsom that we need to look at shutting these schools down for two weeks, not having any faculty or staff come into work, we need to do a deep cleaning 
of all facilities, all school sites, all school buses, the district office. We can look what's going on around us. Our neighboring school districts, Carmel School District, Monterey, Santa Rita, they have all shut down for two weeks. San Francisco shut down, which has a similar demographic to Watsonville with multiple families living in a single family home. Los Angeles, the second largest school district in the nation, has shut down for two weeks. These schools don't even have a live outbreak like we do. The first outbreak here took place here in Pajaro Valley Unified School District. We need more than two weeks to disinfect, do the deep cleaning again according to the guidelines of the CDC and to check our staff. When I went on the CDC's website, and I was grateful that they broke it up between the differences between the K-12 educational system and Cabrillo, uh, excuse me, colleges and uh, universities. The K-12 systems, based on CDC's guidelines, says for K-12 schools trying to mitigate, which is the status we are in now, should close for at least two weeks. This allows time for further understanding of the COVID-19 situation and the community spread. Increased social distancing amongst immediate school community gives time for potentially exposed individuals to develop systems, symptoms while not in school and not at work. The director, um, <clears throat> Director General Tedros Adman of the World Health Organization said that we need to remember that with decisive early action, we can slow down the virus and prevent infections. So I'm asking, again, that we look at our specific situation with our school district, where the first outbreak did occur, that we be safe with all members of our community. We need to take two weeks. That will take us into a buffer of spring break by default, which will actually give us three weeks. It gives this governing body and district administration time to reassess the situation at our next board meeting. It takes nine to 14 days for people to demonstrate symptoms of this virus. We are now trying to flatten the curve. And the only way we can do that is through social distancing. You know, I, you have up here two sitting professors, one at Cabrillo College and myself, trustee home, Cabrillo College and myself at CSUMB. Our contingency team had weeks ago in place, they were preempting all faculty to prepare to go change our modality of teaching because there was the foresight that this was coming and gonna happen. We haven't had an outbreak at CSUMB. There's not been one at Cabrillo College. And when I received an email on Friday at, or excuse me, Thursday at 2.35 to shut down, I was out of the building within hours and I was prepared to change my modality. So I'm really baffled that we are in a situation where the administration of this district is telling faculty and staff that they need to come to work this next week, whether five days, three days, two days, even one day. So with that, I know my colleagues are gonna have comments to make, but I am gonna go ahead and move to make a motion to have a 100% school closure for two weeks with no faculty or staff coming or going to school sites. Bring in a hazmat professionally trained team to deep clean and desanitize per the CDC's guidelines of all school sites, school buses, and the district office. And then we would have an update and review where we're at at our next board meeting, which I believe needs to be done virtually based on um, the governor's and CSBA's guidelines. I'd second your motion. Anybody else have any discussion? Yeah. Trustee Shocker. So, um, no, I hear. Oh, oh sorry. I, um, I hear all of our teachers, our community, our parents um, talking th not only just through emails received today, but ha emails that have been pouring in over the last week. So let me talk about science a little bit. Many people just hear the word COVID-19. There's not a real understanding of what COVID-19 actually is. COVID-19 is an aggressive pathogen more serious than the original SARS virus. 
An analysis of the first 75,000 people who were infected found it had a mortality rate of 2.3%, which will rise as more cases are confirmed. This means it is 23 more times fatal than the seasonal flu. Okay. Um, per CDC, we have seen um, their guidelines, the recommendations. This virus has been shown to spread by respiratory droplets, body fluids, fecal matter, and surface contaminations. CDC guidelines are recommending for surfaces to be cleaned first prior to disinfection. While wearing masks, gowns, and gloves, cleaning with doors and windows open, using proper cleansing agents, sh shampooing carpets, cleaning playground equipment, cleaning dust, cleaning any surface that has the potential to have any type of contamination. Okay, we have many teachers and staff who are considered vulnerable. Either they're pregnant, which CDC has stated they do not know how this virus will affect pregnant women, um, they did state that pregnant women are more prone to the flu, so this has the potential to affect pregnant women harder than someone who is not pregnant. They do not know if there is transmission to the newborn. They do not know if there's transmission through breast milk of this virus for anyone who is breastfeeding their child at home. Also, they have stated there's people who are immunocompromised, people with diabetes, people that have loved ones at home that are immunocompromised with diseases such as cancer. We heard someone that has a um, daughter has a liver disease and just had an operation. Those are immunocompromised people. We should not be having anyone congregate that can potentially spread this disease to other. Our local health department defines an outbreak as two or more confirmed cases. We are now at two or more confirmed cases, which means we are in an outbreak situation. Okay, we heard from President Trump declaring a state of emergency. We've heard from Nancy Pelosi that emergency funds are gonna be mailed available. I spoke to someone at Governor Newsom's office um, they're not confirming or denying this, but um, Governor Newsom is considering declaring a state of emergency. Um, I called Senator Richard Pan's office, who sits on the Education Committee. In a prior email, he stated that they would be working with school districts to make sure that school districts are not penalized for students that are out with the coronavirus, that ADA should not be affected. They are working on a plan in place. Um, first, they wanna see what kind of federal money is possibly going to be made available to us. So we are looking at a, a, you know, a very serious uh, situation. Right now, coronavirus has been set, said that this isn't going to be a three-week thing. Prepare for this to be the corona winter. And that is what's coming out of the scientific community, which means that we're going to be seeing this virus for probably the next three months um, if affecting people. There are also new evidence that this virus can take up to 24 days, and this vi virus does mutate once inside the body, and that's why you're hearing about these people that are getting very sick. Um, bringing children who attend different schools, different sites, to a school site is not c helping contain the spread or flatten the curve. It's putting more cross-contamination for our students and our staff. Um, we've had numerous children that have interaction at various schools, whether they go to dance class in the community, gymnastics classes, those things are still happening right now. So there is a potential that these children are coming in contact with other children that live outside our area. We also have children who commute from Watsonville through interdistrict transfers that go to schools in Aptos. So we have a potential that these children have already possibly been um, in contact with the, vi with the virus. So I think it's essential that we completely close down all of our sites, minimize our people in the district office, get someone in here that knows what they're doing, not put our employees 
at risk and ask them to work outside the scope of their contracts by trying to clean up this virus that has shown it can live for a really long time. And in order for this virus to be killed, there needs to be a minimum of 90 seconds of the cleaning agent on that surface. Okay, so this isn't a one person job. Can you can imagine someone going in to clean a site and they're sitting there waiting for 90 seconds to wipe down a counter, waiting for 90 seconds to you know, spray down a doorknob, spray down desk. This is something that needs to be taken seriously. And we as a board, I believe, you know, we are all here because our constituents want us here. We are all here because we want to put the health of our community, our staff here, our students here. We want that to be our number one priority. The city of Wansonville has virtually shut down. Libraries are closed. Parks and recreation are closed. All non-essential services are going to be closed, right? So it's important that we look at this. Santa Cruz County has declared a health emergency. We, we need to take these things in consideration, and we need to be preemptive and stop the spread of this virus as best as we can. Thank you. Michelle, did you? Oh, okay. Jennifer. I hope you'll bear with me. I was, um, I wanted to have prepared statements, but I was managing the emails, um, and that took up more time than I was expecting. This is an incredibly difficult time on so many levels. Um, I'm a nurse. I'm a public. I have a. I'm a certified as a public health nurse. There are many conflicts that I'm feeling in terms of responsibility for you know, taking an abundance of caution and managing the responsibilities and duties that we have you know, as trustees. I'm concerned about you know, when if people use you know, sick time, and I know the MOU says they may be you know, asked to provide a doctor's note after three days. But I know that our healthcare providers are overwhelmed right now. And I'm concerned about adding to that by requiring people who may have minor illnesses to go to their physicians, take up that, those valuable resources to provide a, a work note. Um, I don't want them going to their, their doctors, you know, unless they actually need their, their doctors or nurse practitioners. Um, what, I, what I'm finding troubling about this situation is that every time I feel like I have an understanding of the scientific basis and or the a scientific background of what's going on, we get additional information. And if we can find, you know, if we can find ways to set up these structures by having, you know, by having the schools, like not having people on site, I really feel that we, we have to, to look at that step. I, it's, This is the time to exercise that abundance of caution. Um, as difficult as that may be, as many things as that means that we may have to work out, and as difficult as that may be to do, and I and I am personally like frightened of what are the implications for the health and well-being of our district, not just in this viral sense, but in terms of how we manage the impact of this. Um, I think that's what I have to say for now. Trustee Roscoe. Yeah, so I want to start off my comments by um, thanking everyone for sending those emails. Um, you know, as a mom to a close to newborn baby and a two year old with respiratory problems, I can definitely understand the concern from the community. As Board of Trustees, our number one responsibility is to represent the interest of our students. And I don't think um, keeping staff and our babies or asking staff and our babies to come to school to work is the right thing to do. Um, I work at UC Santa Cruz and we've taken that extra step. So all classes throughout the spring quarter will be offered virtually. Uh, in an effort to assist with the containment of this virus. 
So I think it is the responsibility of us as a board of trustees to take this very seriously and give priority uh, to making sure that we keep our employees, our students, and our community and family safe. So for that, I will be um, supporting today's motion. Uh, but I also want to make sure that um, our students don't miss out on that learning opportunity. So I think a lot of our time needs to be invested in making sure that we have that in place. Um, I know in 2016, we uh, did a study of students in the district who did not have access to Wi-Fi. At that time, <clears throat> Wi-Fi at home. Um, at that time, um, uh, it was determined that about 3,000 students may not have internet access at home. And so I know our district staff has been working very hard to ensure that we get our students connected, but I'm also aware that we have only acquired about 500 hotspots, 750 hotspots. Um, so with that, um, in, in an effort to ensure that we, that our students have access um, to the curriculum at home, um, there is an additional resource which I also have shared with the superintendent. I think we need to uh, even reach out to them further. So Charter um, is to offer free access to a spectrum broadband and Wi-Fi for 60 days for new K-12 and college student households and more. So um, there is uh, no hidden fees for this uh, resource and I think at this point in time given the severity of the situation I think we need to um, come together as a community and access all resources available um, where possible. Um, I also disagree that at this point in time we're asking to have any employee submit a, a notice from the doctor if they've been out sick. I think that's just uh, not okay. Um, and, um, you know, and then with daycare centers closing, I'm one of those parents who relies on childcare um, and so forth. I think it's, you know, we need to keep that in mind too, that I think at this point in time is likely that all our families may take a salary cut and we need to be mindful of that um, and make, you know, that process more easy in our families and our employees. Um, you know, um, um, Kim shared an article with me that said that, you know, they were actually even looking at, in order to really help contain this, uh, to, that in order for this to actually be effective, they were looking at the possibility of actually closing up to eight weeks in order to really help with the containment. So there's a lot of things going on. But again, just bringing back my comments to our focus is, is really the safety of our students, the safety of our staff, the safety of our community that's at stake here. So with that, I get I will be supporting um, the motion made today. Trustee DeSerpa, did you want to say? So um, I, I don't want to repeat what's already been said. I certainly agree with Trustee Orozco. Um, we haven't faced anything like this as a society, as a um, world community in more than a hundred years. So um, this is, every day is a new day. We learn new things every day. Um, I think all of us are just trying to sort of keep the panic under control and trying to use an abundance of caution um, to flatten the bell curve. That the social distancing is to sort of help um, contain the virus from spreading because if it spreads too fast we won't have enough ventilators to keep people alive. So it's really to flatten that curve so that we can um, handle patients in the hospital. I do work in a hospital just as um, Trustee Holm does and um, you know we're, it's the first time hospitals have had to deal with this too, this um, impending um, human disaster. 
So um, I think it is a good idea to, to limit um, people being um, on our campuses at this time. I think in the future, if we have an emergency meeting like this, I would like to have invite Dr. Gail Newell, our public health officer. She's an OBGYN and um, a, I think a PhD in public health. Um, and she did meet with all the superintendents, including Ferris Sabah, to make the decision to close the school for a week. Um, I think we're all um, pretty clear that a week won't be enough, and I think they're just taking it one week at a time at this point. Um, so, um, I, I don't know what to, else to say, except I know this is going to have grave um, consequences for many, many families who can't afford childcare, who will then have to stay home and not be able to work. And um, so I think all of us um, are very, very concerned about all of our parents in the community who are going to have a great deal of economic loss. And we need to come together um, as a community, as a society, to help everyone who's affected. Um, so anyway, I, I do I do hope that Gail Newell can be here next time to dispel some of, of um, people's fear around some things. Yeah, if possible. I don't know if she has time. She's very, very busy at this point. Yeah. Okay. And thank you, and everyone stay safe. Karen, did you want to make a comment or anything re regarding this? Okay, speak. I was, they're a little bit different sometimes. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten so many texts from teachers. It's, you know, it's pretty obvious that people think that we need to clean cl our classrooms like incredibly well before they should come back. And, um, and the teachers are very capable to do distance preparation um, for their children, for their students, not children, <laughs> for their children too, but for their students. And so I'm, I'm really supporting the idea of letting teachers and their children stay home next week. I think that would be the best thing to do and then figure out what we can do later on, what we're going to try to do later on. But at least cleaning and allowing teachers to stay home with their children, not bring them to school, is what I think we should do. <laughs> Did you want to finish up something? Yeah, Trust sorry about that. Um, this is a question for um, Dr. Rodriguez. So I know there are some companies that are trying to take advantage um, of sort of this disaster and they have sort of preset curriculum that's delivered online, et cetera. Have we looked into any of that? And like so, I know that big company called K-12 uh, is offering a f like a month for free of their online curriculum. <clears throat> so there are resources. We, I don't think that we need to spend the money um, to, be, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I just before um, President Dodge, Dodge speaks, so First and foremost, I've been one of the most vocal to closing our schools. Um, and so the three hour conversation that we had as, as the 10 superintendents, I will say we were all unanimous. But um, one of the things that allowed um, Gail, Dr. Gail Newell to give us her concurrence was um, my assurance that we would support our vulnerable student populations. And so the reason why she only, we only did one week is because there was a concern, which is why the letter to the community was so strong, um, was there was a concern that, Pete, that if we release schools, but then um, students, children, continued to conjugate in large masses, they continue to go to malls, they continue to go to um, movie theaters, that it would actually spike it further, and that we would see students that didn't have what she called the emergent, urgent needs taken into account. So what I would say is, um, so technically this meeting had no action items. I don't need you to do an action item. I am 
because I am supportive of it. What I have tried to stay away from is currently the, and it specifically just came out from CD, unless we have her concurrence, we have to make up the days. What I know to be true with staff and students and parents is they do not want to extend into the summer months. So the one week we obviously knew probably would be extended. If I didn't think it was going to be extended, we wouldn't be doing all the work around distance learning. And um, I am fine with us going down to a central staff. Um, but we would need to amend it to central staff because we have a legal requirement to provide urgent and emergent needs to students. So we, one of the examples is food services. We have to provide food services for students. We have to provide some way to have access to referrals for both medical and social emotional needs, which, um, and so there has to be some staff that is available for parents. And so then the question becomes of at what point do we bring back staff um, so that then we can make sure and not, um, and not do it. I was told that the following week we would have to do long distance learning or we would have to make up those days. If that's not, um, if really every day is changing, um, so it could completely shift. If we're not required to do distance learning, I do still think it's best for our kids not to have months on end where they are not taught. Um, but it gives us a lot of leeway of what we can do because it is accurate that we have not cleaned the Chromebooks. We cleaned the Chromebooks. It was mentioned that one person that, that spoke said that he had been cleaning the Chromebooks at Real Mud, and that is accurate that we, the only site that we have said that we would do a deep cleaning on was Rio Mar because we had an active case. As of yesterday at 6 p.m., we do not have any additional active cases in PVUSD. However, we do have staff that is being assessed, and that, that is true. We have one additional school, as I mentioned earlier, that as soon as we found out. So, um, Technically, a vote cannot happen at this meeting. What I'm saying is I don't need a vote. We can, I just, you can give me direction on what you want. I will say, though, we need to be aware that we have legal responsibilities to still provide urgent and emergent need. So having every staff member not be present next week um, is not possible because we wouldn't be able to do legally and really ethically what we need to do for our students. So we could determine what that is, what are those services, and then um, that could be well delineated out, but we, we still have to provide at least food services and additional and, and conduits to community partners. Just, uh, I just want to echo what everybody says. I stand, I know we don't need a motion, but I stand behind that 110%. I just want to say thank you to the Watsonville High teachers, Radcliffe teachers who wrote emails. Um, I'm glad to see we're getting this response. You know, I thank you for Trustee Holm for, you know, I know I sent some people and I forgot to tell them to put the subject, so that might have taken more time. Um, I also talked to teachers person in E Hall and Minnie White, they're also concerned, scared. Um, I just, uh, again, I don't want to repeat everything that my colleague said, but we need to protect the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. We need to protect our teachers. We need to protect our students. We need to protect our custodians and bus drivers. We need to protect the pregnant workers in our district. We need to protect our special ed students. We need to protect our mothers and daughters. And we need to protect our most vulnerable children, the Pajaro Valley Unified School District. And so thank you, everybody who attended this meeting. Um, this is what we're here for in a time of dangers and things like that. So thank you. Uh, Trustee Acosta, if you want to say something. Yes, thank you, President Trustee Dodge Jr. So um, if the superintendent is, um, you know, and, and we'll look into the policy on this, but if not going to accept an emotion, 
from a sitting governing board member that has already been seconded at this emergency meeting. Um, then I'm going to move that, if you'd like. I think that's the direction you're kind of also giving me a sitting president to remove it as a motion. So I'm going to restate it as direction from the governing board of directors and to the superintendent. And then I would like to call a roll call on that direction. Okay. Yes. So removing the motion that I made on the floor earlier that was seconded by my colleague, Trustee Shocker, I am now moving that to direction from this governing board to the superintendent of Pajaro Valley Unified School District, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez. To have a 100% school closure for two weeks with no faculty or staff coming or going to school sites other than essential and strictly essential uh, staff personnel for the conditions that Dr. Rodriguez spoke of with regards to the feeding for our students, the administration of that food. Um, and the, to further direct that we bring in the HAZMAT a professionally trained team to do a deep cleaning in all of our schools and desanitize um, all of our school sites, the buses, the district offices, per the CDC's guidelines. This is not something at this point that we can even take a risk with, having had an outbreak in the school districts and with the modality of teachers and faculty and staff going from school site to school site and even down here to this district office and students being transported on school buses. Um, and then I'd like to, for us to update and review where the status of that is at this next board meeting that's regularly scheduled um, for not next Wednesday, but the next. And that, that I think we're going to, we'll be conducting that virtually, it sounds like. That is a recommendation from CDE, yes. Okay. So that is my direction. Continue long distance learning. Yeah, and the continue the do long distance learning. So that is my. Okay. Can I get just, sorry. Sure, sure. Clarification. So are we asking and it would be my recommendation, are we still asking teachers to produce the distance learning or not? At home. At home. At home. Mm -hmm. But we are asking them to do that yes. work yes. so that yes. we are prepared. Yes. Yeah, I mean, are you feeling that we need to look at, is it one of these sites that, no, as Karen, I mean, not Karen, I'm sorry, as Trustee DeSerpa was saying, is that what you're thinking no, we need to do my, that instead? Yeah, no. My understanding from many teachers is they want to determine what continuity of learning is for their own children and that they don't want a program. I'm just clarifying that whether or not we are still continuing. Um, oh, distance with learning. Distance yes, learning. yes, yes, absolutely. yes. Absolutely. Dr. Rodriguez, oh, so that's loud. <laughs> Dr. Rodriguez, yes, you're absolutely right that we should continue the distance learning at home. I also know that um, Zoom meetings is also free now, and that may be an option to do some Virtual meeting class. time virtually with teachers and staff for you to meet with them and to help them if they have questions. Okay, so then. Um, I'm just for trying to provide clarification. So during that two weeks, technically staff is on, is working and getting paid to everything, yeah. and they should be available during their regular working hours for virtual activity. Is that yes. is that accurate? Yeah. Correct. That's correct. Okay. Yes. All right, I'm just as, confirming. As well as using the staff that is needed to implement the food service, which has been directed by not only the United States government, but the state of California, and maybe asking for maybe volunteers first on who wants to do that, and also taking advantage of um, Second Harvest, who's offered their help and has workers already trained in distribution, um, as well as the city of Watsonville has offered some help, which I know you're in touch with them all the time. So in terms of Monday and food services on Monday, it was already planned on how we would align food services for Monday. And that includes all of our food service workers to be able to get that done. So I'm confirming that we will continue with that process because we there is no way that we could do something different for Monday at 7 a.m. when food is supposed to be delivered to our students and make a current change to that. No, I don't think we need a change. I think the board agrees with that. Can I ask, can we do that for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday too? <laughs> so we had it planned for all five days. I'm just trying to make sure that there 
is understanding of what is being said. So currently, we have all food service workers who are prepared to um, work the drive through and walk up lines with yeah. the bag lunches. And there are 16 sites that have already been sent out to our community on mm -hmm. the different times. So I'm just clarifying that food service workers would continue to yes. provide that. Yes. Second harvest is going to be at those sites as well. Thank you. That's so great. Okay. Right. Eva, do you need any more clarification on any of that for me as well? I see you typing over there. <laughs> okay. So um, with that, I, th I think we all, we both Eva and um, Dr. Michelle Rodriguez both have clarification. Anything else you need clarification on? Mm, no, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Any board member need clarification? Because as I said, I'm gonna, I'd like you to um, have Eva roll call the directive uh, of every sitting board member. Had a, a okay. Question, um, so, a lot, you know, as we all know, a lot of our students don't do not have access to distance learning. Uh, they don't have screens at home, or they might not have good connections. Um, so, I'm guessing that. So, part of the directive of having people on campus was to sort of prepare plans that would then be like copied into packets, and then they families could pick those up or so somehow we would get those to students. So can we have a little so, discussion about that? So the, the original plan was for Monday and Tuesday was for all technology staff and custodians to clean every single Chromebook that we have in the school with the chemicals that we have proven to um, kill the virus. We were planning on getting that done. So in anticipation of Wednesday, when the determination was for the second week, um, so there was an assumption that we were going to have concurrence from the county office, um, I'm sorry, the, the county health department that we would do a second week so that we were preparing so that we would then on Thursday and Friday, so we had it all sketched out, Thursday and Friday then we would have third through 12th grade students, currently, um, K, I'm not saying K2 students are not on computers because they are, but most of their learning is not directed um, by that, by on, on the computer. And at third grade and on, although I say a five-year-old could do, do, do it as well, but third grade and on, they generally are very independent on technology, not that we don't have challenges with technology after third grade. But they would do the exact same process that we were doing for food services with the drive up. So we were planning on doing um, 15 schools a day. And so 15 schools on Thursday. Actually, I, I misspeak because, yeah, no, 15 schools on Thursday, 15 schools on Friday, where they would drive up or walk up because we recognize some people don't have cars. And we were going to check out the student, a Chromebook, and ask them, do you need a hotspot for your family? Um, we, um, and those hotspots are only good for district equipment because they actually have um, the screener on it so that kids cannot get on, um, you know, on sites that they shouldn't get on. So it has our firewall. Um, so it only, it doesn't, unfortunately for the parent, it doesn't work on like their phone. It would only work on our devices and they would come in, check out, and we, um, and then we would give it to them. So we have 250 from our original work. We have worked with T-Mobile. Originally, it was 350. That's why Maria had the 500 um, number. I have since um, done additional, um, and they are already shipped. They're on their way here. Um, so we will have them by Thursday. Um, where we can, um, we'll have a total of 700 and some. We, the key is we need to make sure that parents are aware we need one per household because it can do up to five of our devices, but we don't want, um, you know, two PVOC students. Um, but so the reason why staff was going to be there, it wasn't just to make it a challenge for people. It was so that we can then be prepared to serve our students. And so um, the students will not receive their Chromebooks for three weeks. Um, 
Why and can't we do Chromebooks at food service since we're already um, getting parents and set up a second type of um, Chromebook delivery? I need, I need for them. cleaned. Well, maybe we can talk with CSAA and about my directive would be to talk with CSEA and seeing about getting some people that might want the hours that would come in and clean those Chromebooks. Well, that to get maybe that there. would be considered part of that essential staff. staff. That's part of the essential staff. So we've identified two categories of essential staff, food service and and Either custodial or, t or, or technology. Both have been. Whoever's trained. So Who's ever trained them. to clean them. So we have, we've trained, um, We've trained custodian on cleaning with the chemical, and we have trained um, technology. No. There's no back and forth. I think that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of and figure that out. So this is a similar situation. The city of Watsonville has shut down, okay? Mm -hmm. They have only what they're identified groups of non-essential employees coming in. Mm -hmm. That means firefighters, mm -hmm. right? I mean, non-essential employees not coming in. Essential employees coming in. Firefighters, essential. PD, essential. The waste management that does our pickup for trash, essential. The water treatment facility plant, essential employees out there that need to be there to run the plant. So I think that's what we're trying to do here is identify essential employees that we need to bring on to take care of our food service, which we are mandated by both federal and state laws to do. And besides that, I don't think any one of us sitting here wants to see students in our district go starving and hungry when we have, what is it, 74, 77% qualify for the free meal program? Yeah, can maybe I so, have a suggestion? Yeah. Um, and it would mean one more week without um, long distance learning for our students. But um, on a hard surface, we know that um, it's anywhere from three to nine days. So possibly what we do is we have one week with complete shutdown except for food services, asking teachers to continue to prepare themselves for it. Because I will tell you, I'm just having and it, this isn't gloating, it's, it's just talking about time. So I used to write curriculum, and I will tell you it is more laborious than we think. To write hours and hours worth of curriculum is actually super, super challenging. So we have I resources know. for people. But anyways, so we, we ask know. them from home. <laughs> okay, so we have, we, have peop we have people at home doing that. For the first week, we do nothing but food services. Um, I will have to see um, what is considered urgent and emergent because it is possible we would have to have at least one person in the office in order to be able to have some type of liaison to other programs such as PVPSA or Salud para Gente, all that. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following week we would ask another layer of staff to come back after um, it has been the nine days. You mean the layer, the essential staff to you clean the custodial Chromebooks? and the technology, so that then we could provide um, provide the technology to students. Is it possible? I mean, we we do a lot of outsourcing. Is it possible to outsource that cleaning and not bring in that staff? I just don't know in the time period that we have. I, I don't know. And that I, there's a resource in the county to do yeah, it. Yeah, I just, or I, I, I'm not sure. And in terms of the, ha the hazmat um, team coming in to do the facilities, because I do anticipate it will be multiple weeks, I'm not as worried about that. I'm a little bit more worried about the Chromebook piece just because there's somewhat of an urgency. And, it is not, just so that people know, it has nothing for me to do about ADA. It has to do about, we need kids not, we need kids to continue to, to learn. learn. And, we, and we, also, we also need, I know, I'm trying to avoid an a issue later on where I'm telling people, you no longer are, are graduating June 5th, it's now June 12th. And, and we um, hope it doesn't come to that, but some of this is just it is beyond any 
yours or any one of our seven's control. Well, and if we, if we are okay with knowing that school may be extended, which means staff will have to continue to work additional weeks, then, then that makes the job much easier. And I think that because we are in the same situation with Cabrillo College and CSUMB still figuring out the status of that. You know, will commencement ceremony take place on the day it's scheduled? Because are we going to be able, because we were mandated into a week for faculty to go into their prep. We aren't doing any instruction this week. We don't resume instruction until next Friday. So we do lose that week, right? And, and as an instructor, that's really hard, right? Because you still have to cover that curriculum, that material, and get it. So it's figuring it out. And I understand that process really well. And I know Trustee Holm does. So I'm just concerned about having any, if there's another way we could do that with like the Chromebooks, like if we can find an outsource to do that instead of bringing in staff to do it, I think that would be more ideal. Um, but if it boils down to that it has to be staff because we can't find a source, you know, and maybe the, the, so you know, the for the following week. For that so, following week. And then we would release on Thursday and, that would be and Friday only. of the following week. So then, and, and so let's also be clear, the understanding for community, right, for students and their, fam their parents. Challenge. Are we saying that then this week there is no instruction happening from teachers? And that was already. That was that, that already. Is, but no, because yes. just to so clarify that, yes. what's going on here. And if we do here. this, that would mean two <clears throat> weeks of no instruction for kids plus spring break. Unless we could find an outsource to clean those Chromebooks this week. That is that that that, that could there. change that so that instruction can re begin the following week. So I have a, a question here, um, if I may. Mm -hmm. So now that we're bringing the conversation back to instruction, what about students with IAPs and services? So currently, there is doc there is um, additional documents that just came out from both the federal government and CDE in terms of that. Most of it was um, surrounding the need, the ability to push back IEPs and push back. Um, we will eventually need to provide um, services for those students. At this point, how it's working is what's called compensatory services, which basically means that due to an emergency situation, um, sometimes it's lack of staff, but in this case, it's the coronavirus. We're not able to provide those compensatory services. And so then because of that, they make them up at other times. Sometimes it's, well, I was going to say spring break, can't say that. Um, it was, um, you know, summer, um, after school, um, those types. of Yeah, I of guess for me, it's more the online learning piece for them. I guess just giving that additional direction, right? Because it, it's, it is a different population of students. So mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that the instruction is still provided and, and, you know, how that looks like, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah um, life, life skills classes will be our most challenging. Our RSP and mild to moderate classes, not as much. Our life skills classes will be a challenge. Okay. So since we're on the subject of learning, I know the district has resources online where parents can log in to certain programs at home. Maybe we can use um, our Pajaronian as well as the Watsonville City website to get the word out there, um, not only through our website, but also through them, that during this time, when their kids, they can be logging in if they have access at home to the learning um, sites that the district recommends. And also putting what Maria mentioned about, was it Comcast, Maria, or Spectrum? Charter. Charter. That they're offering about the 60 days. So getting the, the word out there. Yeah, so I, she's putting up this, um, just because I believe this will be well watched and we always are trying to find out how to get to our best parent, to our parents' best. I just want to note we did do this for this first week. Um, and actually, I think I asked staff to do it for two, and they did get it done for me. So again, thank you for the staff for hustling on um, this work. So um, we were able to do packets by grade level English and Spanish for 10 days for our parents. We do have um, paper versions that we were going to send to school sites. We already have them um, ready um, to go. Um, and so that would be 
an option for parents that don't have technology ability to go. So I'll just um, I'll just show you like an example of what the pack is. So this is this. Um, I made them do it quick, so it is rudimentary looking. I understand, but it's um, it's mm -hmm. it's there. Um, and so, um, but that again would require some essential staff to be at the sites. Right? Michelle, I don't mean to interrupt you, sure. but is this something that we could do at our food service sites? Um, sure. I mean, when they when they, they pick up have their, everything have like in a, their meal, like they can also pick up. So have food service and then a the few need staff a packet. members there. Because then we're minimizing people coming in to sites and minimizing places that people yeah. are going. Sure. Yeah, because we do food service. Yeah, and just to be clear, um, all the food service is is happening outside in the um, car loop. So we never were bringing anyone inside. It was always happening in the car loop area. Yeah. Uh, Trustee Holmey had something to say. Do we ha I know other districts have either moved up or moved back their spring break. Is that is there any consideration for that? We had that conversation. It's a negotiated item, so we had moved more towards the distance learning so that we didn't have to do that. Um, you know, I, I think, I mean, it's, it's a negative but a benefit all at the same time. The more school districts that closed down, which I do want to note that we did do that before LAUSD in San Diego, but um, the more school districts that um, that closed down, the more leniency there will be on school districts um, because it is affecting more children. So that's why I said, um, you know, the obligation for distance learning may change over time. But we do have to realize that if this is um, a month-long process or two months or, or whatever, um, we do need to ensure that our students continue to learn because they yeah, have the absolutely. right to do that. Absolutely. Yes. Um, I think Trustee DeSerpo wanted to say something real quick. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not, but I know LA Unified is, is pushing out like a TV program. Um, and I'm wondering if we could even just look into partnering with um, Estrella and um, maybe KSBW or KON to maybe push out something similarly. Because a lot of kids might have access to a TV, but not really uh, um, anything except a phone. Thank you. Just See, a that's a great idea. On that, that those channels, even if they don't have cable, uh, locally do come in. Yeah. OK. OK. Yeah, so I, th I love the idea, the TV idea that LA is going to mention that doing we should be able to try that. And we also have, of course, you know, the younger students can do PASO, a PASO, and they could do it for longer than 50 minutes. <laughs> you know, we've said 50 minutes a day. How about longer than 50 minutes? <laughs> 15 minutes, you know what I'm saying? PASO, a PASO is a great fun program for, um, to get, you know, our younger students super involved in. And, and I think in most cases, most parents can tap into that, right? Yes, they all can. We did. I just wanted to show you in case you are talking to parents. We do have offline activities for them as well and then online. So the parents, um, it's a one-stop shop. So just talking about the footsteps of brilliance, they would just click right here and then it takes them directly there or Brain Pop. There's all the programs that our students use on a daily basis, Alexia and others yeah. that are here. Um, we, you know, once we get the Chromebooks out and the hotspots, um, these will be good um, programs for them to use as well. And I'm sure that as teachers are constructing their day, especially elementary, um, they'll probably say, you know, do 30 minutes on Lexia every day or, you know. Things yeah, of, they of can that actually nature. say that to them. So, um, I mean, that, that stuff can, can I just determine on um, communication? Um, with with staff, um, if, so what we are saying is for I'm just confirming. So for the first week from March 16th to March what is that 20th um, 20th that all staff except for all all but essential staff um, will um, remain at home or rem well I'll Work determine remotely. the wording but. 
um, that we that food service um, workers should report on Monday and should continue to support the food service um, the food service distribution that we have um, and then um, starting and that we will be identifying if there's an outside source that can do um, the Chromebooks and well first the Chromebooks that's yeah, like the first the Chromebooks, first, yeah. the Chromebooks. Yeah. Um, and um, that we are asking teachers to continue to from home um, continue to plan the distance learning in preparation of of all the virtual um, and that they need to be available that all staff needs to be available for virtual activity during their hours so whether we do Keenan training or we decide to do online training or something like that and, and allowing them time to prep to yeah. the change of their modality yeah I, I mean we need to give them leeway yeah, with I'm that not, in yeah there I'm, I'm thinking more we have several um, like bloodborne pathogens mostly with our classified staff that we're required to do anyway so if we can take advantage of that and uh, you know it's coming back to this Chromebooks because I'd like to be able to see that they could get into the hands of students by as you're saying maybe the end of this week so Thursday and Friday was the goal. so so that they could be prepped so I, I would go back to saying that if let's say you take m Monday you know because it's a weekend you probably may not find anything out if you mm -hmm. can outsource it and if you, you determine you can't then you need to br Again, that's now essential staff to bring them in to clean those Chromebooks. This first week, then. Yeah. This first week, because okay. then how can we get back online with curriculum by Monday the 23rd? You, you would not. Exactly. So I'm going to identify this as being essential staff if you can't find an outsource that could get it done for us by, so they could be distributed on Thursday and Friday. Okay. And Michelle, just because I'm getting a lot of questions from Duncan Holbert, they're asking, um, what would distant learning look for preschools look like for preschools in this particular Duncan Holbert? Do they get Chromebooks, iPads? Um, so we're not providing any Chromebooks to K two students. Okay. So they would not receive them. Yeah. So I guess just a fol following so up with Duncan Holbert. Distance learning would be packet driven, like okay. K two. Okay. Thank you. Which I think we, Trustee Shocker clarified those will be distributed through the. Um, Food distribution, right? Yeah. So, um, so for the the so for the first week, um, we will provide. Um, so it all depends on what we're doing. So if we are doing, let me get back to um, to the the parent one. So if we and um, if we are doing, for example the packets for the parents. This was meant for just while we didn't have um, distance learning because it's going to um, automatically your most fragile students are going to have uh, less access to this. You just are. And so that's why this was just a stopgap uh, for the first week so that if we had parents who could and would um, be able to do this, and it's in English and Spanish too, so it's um, it, it, we're able to have it in Spanish as well. But um, what was thought was these packets would only be available the first week before we start distance learning, and it would. It, it was a great idea. We could do it during the food services, food services for sure. Yeah. But the thought was just to do that at one. Um, for the one week, not for multiple weeks. Um, because you automatically, just according to the availability of your parent, the educational level of your parent, you're going to have really disparate conditions um, within our students. Just Is that something we can look at, since we're talking about rolling out the distance learning for the following week, possibly just having those packets available for the following week if we get requests from parents for packets and then they can pick them up at food service? Sure. Yeah. I think doing something like that, then we've got bases covered. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll do um, the first week, we'll cut because it will be fairly expensive for us. We'll do the first week copies, see how much people access them, how much they want them. Because you can see what's being u utilized um, and how many times it's that link is clicked. 
Yeah, and not, you, or not. You, yeah, you can, but also just how many copies are picked up over the week, um, so that if we, you know, if we do a large number initially, and then we find that people are like, no, um, right. then we won't, we won't pick them up. Can I just make one recommendation? So once, um, I'm glad that we're all talking about this and brainstorming here and that all 450 people watching at home can understand what's happening. Uh, but just so that everyone is on the same page and so that they're not receiving an email from a principal saying one thing and from admin saying another, can we just send out, once we have this process fleshed out, a communication to everyone on how they're going to be impacted? how their positions are going to be impacted, who's going to be expected uh, to come to work, or who falls under that category of essential, essential services, and, and so forth, just so that everyone is on the same page. So from what I understand, just so that people out there know, because um, I, too, care about family. I'm going to be running out of here and picking up my son, who I have not seen for eight weeks, so I'm excited to see him. Oh, wow. um, so I... Um, but what I understand to be true is the only people reporting from the school sites next week are is food services. The question, which I don't have the response to, but we need people to continue to get paid. We do still need to have some people in like HR and all that. Um, so we some the district office. It, we are going to have to. Um, you know, we're going to have to figure out who exactly is considered mm -hmm. essential in terms of that. Um, I never, I never like to use this, but I, I do want people to know that we are um, disaster relief workers. Anyone who works for a school district is, and I know that the, the colleges got that notification too. Mm -hmm. So every staff member has to be ready to support if there if there is a disaster and I say that because people really should not be going out of town um, That's and they shouldn't be going further away than if something necessitated it would be a large issue but necessitated it then they could be mm -hmm. brought back and I know that the city said that as well to its employees mm -hmm. of, of that but um, so because I'm just not sure um, if we were going to be able to get consensus within a couple of hours of what that letter um, should read. Yeah, but I mean, just just in general, though, it doesn't have to go out today per se, but just as soon as you have all the details fleshed out, I think it will be good to just okay. send so it So when out. is the expectation that the letter will go out, and when, um, how would the board like to look at that letter prior to its release? I think it will be a good idea maybe by the end of tomorrow at the latest, I say just so that three. people have enough time to plan. So I can, I can say Sunday at noon if, um, if, <coughs> you, can, um, if you can if you can ensure that uh, we'll do a Google Doc so okay. everybody can yes. make comments on it. Um, if everyone can look at it um, starting at... I will have it ready by like 9 a.m. Okay. okay. That's fine. Tomorrow. 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 Yeah. It, but you want us to, st so you want us to start looking at it by 9 a.m. and be done with looking at it by noon. That's my thought, yeah. that okay. within three and hours. Dr. Rodriguez, if you can add on their directive, um, cause since we're clarifying everything now, that the teachers have their long distance learning plans ready by Friday, or mm -hmm. if you want them Thursday or Friday, but give them a deadline that their long distance learning plans are ready for so that you have time to look at them and the teachers know what's expected. Okay. We had originally said um, Wednesday. Um, should we? Third? Okay. Um, online, you're, they're going to be doing online learning, right? And then we'll have packets available for only those parents that request so, them. So, yeah, so that, so, um, we were allowing continuity of learning according to the individual teachers. So when you look at the MOU that we had set up, it wasn't that there was a district mandated curriculum that everyone did, but that the teachers had the ability to use those resources if they wanted to, but also not use those resources if they wanted to. 
um, so that, so, because we do have varying teachers. I mean, we have teachers who are super techie and their students are so used to it. And then you have some teachers who, um, like, even emails can be, like, they, they're like, can you give me a hard copy of it? So there are varying degrees of how people want to engage and then also engage their children. Um, but they can, they can access um, the website for sure, which is why we have these, um, have this, for instance, Learn From Home resources for teachers. Um, here are the resources that they, so that they don't have to hunt and peck them, which is why we, why the, we were doing a, the virt a virtual meeting. We we're going to do a virtual meeting um, on Monday to talk about this so that they, they don't have to like scan curriculum or try to find the virtual. They can just click here and here's all of the links already. So we tried to do a lot of the work for them. But yeah, so we can have it by Thank you. And then lastly, just because there is a communication that Ghost Elsa's have, I think we need to send out a communication to the larger community, especially our parents, noting of the different resources, where it's going to be available, when they can show up, and so forth. So I think there's two set of co uh, separate communications that need to go out to staff and okay. community and parents. Yeah. And to Tony is here from the Pajaronian. Would it be something that we could um, email him that maybe the Pajaronian can help us by printing? Publishing. Share Publishing. Online. Where's that? So, oh, did he leave? I didn't see Tony. Oh. I don't, I don't see him. OK. <laughs> I'm sure like, if, okay. if, if, if Dr. Rodriguez reaches out to him, he'd be more than happy to yeah, help. And, been, and probably the, um, the Times. Yeah, I don't, the, good, the Good Time. Or yeah, time, the Times Publishing Group in Aptos, because yeah. Yeah, that, a lot of the Aptos readers, I think, read that, so. Um, I, you know, I just have to follow up on the, the Chromebook cleaning with the um, art, art, IT staff and custodial. custodial staff. So you said they've been trained. How, who trained them and, and to what guidelines were they trained for cleaning these, you know, per what's coming out of CDC's recommendations and guidelines for sure. cleaning issues? So the custodial staff was trained by our new director of maintenance and operations, Richard Reed, on Wednesday. Um, they either went to a 1 o'clock or a 2.30, and they were provided chemicals in terms of hard surfaces and, um, and how to clean the desk. Um, our technology staff was trained by... Dan Weiser's team, possibly not specifically Dan Weiser's, but Dan Weiser's team, because we were already preparing for the cleaning of the rest of the Chromebooks. Um, so we had a team that went in and did um, Real Edmar, and then we were planning on replicating that. The reason why it's important to have multiple hands is because we will be cleaning about 15,000 Chromebooks. So that's a lot of Chromebooks. So are clean. we, the faculty that has their Chromebooks, is it just on them to clean their own that they're probably already in possession of at home right now? You I mean assume. their own personal? No, the, no, the ones distributed by the district. Are um, the, so are those in possession of faculty who left yesterday or are they in their classrooms, I so guess? So we, we told, we told um, people not to distribute their Chromebooks on Friday because we needed to clean them first. Okay. So, so faculty doesn't have them. Well, they have their personal ones, but they okay. they're okay. they're ones for their children or their students. No, I'm meaning their personal ones, but their um, personal ones are distributed by the district. It's district equipment, correct? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So their personal ones, but which is district equipment, they're in possession of those. They are. And have those been cleaned, or have they been instructed? They have has how to clean them. Neither. <clears throat> Okay, so th that sounds like that needs to happen. And well, because we thought people were going to be on yeah, staff. Sure, sure. Um, okay. but the, and then back to who trained Dan's team and um, the m and team, Richard Reed. Richard, how, where did they get their training and guidelines for cleaning those Chromebooks? So we had a county-wide M&O um, convening 
where everyone from MNO throughout the county and county health was present. Okay. And so then they determined the guidelines at that meeting so that everyone was using the same protocols and the same materials. Okay. So we're all using the same, there's, there's a disinfectant and there is a sanitizer. One can be used in presence of children and one cannot. The disinfectant um, take should, needs to stay on the surface for up to five minutes and should not be, because of the fumes, uh, well, I, I shouldn't say the fumes, but because of the odor. Um, because of what is occurring with it, you should not have children present um, versus the sanitizer, it can be used um, with children present. Um, and they're using um, special cloths with the computers to do, um, you know, for all four areas. Right, right. right. Okay. So that's why it takes a long time, because each computer takes, you have to open it up and takes pretty significant so is, time. So were all custodians trained on this, or was there just a select few? All custodians, no no custodians were trained on, the, on technology. They were trained on the use of the chemicals and hard surfaces. Okay. And then... Um, the technology department was trained specifically on So we the, would look at possibly calling in technology to do the cleaning. Well, we would do technology and we would need, we talked on um, Friday about needing to repurpose custodial staff to help support that since they already know the chemical piece because we, technology staff will not be able to get it done in time if we have to do 15,000 and we only have technology staff. Okay, so staff. they would have to be trained then on how to use the chemical on the laptop. On the laptop specifically, but it would be the same chemicals. I have a quick question. Um, essential staff, is that something you'd have to work with CACA, PVFT, or is there already other guidelines considering what this essential staff is? Well, um, CDE has established certain elements that we have to provide. So there are three areas that they have said that we must provide. Food services has been the one that's most been most um, widely um, published, but it's food service and access to connection to health services and, and social emotional support. So that would mean that someone is able to direct them. I mean, we have a significant amount of people who depend on us to, to connect them to PVPSA. Usually it's through Kid Corner. So see, usually the process is through the school site. So that's why you, you can't for, because like, remember, if you're off for six weeks, you can't for six weeks not have that. Um, that is, but, um, that's why the one that you have to have for sure is food services. That's why I'd mentioned there is a possibility if we wanted to is for the first week, really it would be food services and then some district office because we have to continue to pay people. We have to continue to take complaints and all that. Um, so we could do it the first week, but then it would mean that kids would not get their Chromebooks. Um, we just need to, as, I mean, this is a really complex thing. I think, um, and I understand that everybody's upset and concerned. I think it's, there is positive intent, although it might not seem that way. There is positive intent on everything that the 10 superintendents did. So all 10 superintendents had their employees working the next five days. I already made the change to have it be just the first three days in an effort to work with staff. And that wasn't done because we don't care about staff. That was done because we know the amount of work that needs to go into to prepare our community to be off for a significant amount of time. I, I you know, I, I think I'm gonna, I just feel like it's maybe more essential that we lean back on with the cleaning of the Chromebooks that we, um, I just don't think it's something that we can facilitate really to get done. I, I think we need to lean back on that. That needs to be outsourced. I really do. I, I think there, I mean, I mean, we are with an earshot of Silicon Valley. There has got to be a facility. Can I say something about the cleaning? It doesn't matter if the, if the Chromebooks get deep 
cleaned because if the person is infected, they're going to recontaminate the Chromebook the next time they use it. So this is an ongoing issue. So I'm not sure that a deep cleaning is going to be helpful. The, they need to be cleaned daily after use, after every use, really, if we're going to be on top of um, the virus. Well, I, I get your point. The only challenge is, is you've had other children use yes. it, and now you're giving it to a child. Um, that was the reason why we were cleaning them, is because we, um, they've been, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes you have a cart, but the way that it would work with this, because we're not asking teachers to support the, um, the rollout of the, of the Chromebooks, is it's not going to be, even if you're in your class, you're a third grade, and your number, usually it's by numbers, you're number 11, and you always go get Chromebook number 11, um, it's not, you're not getting 11 when you drive through. You're getting a random Chromebook that is going to be yours for the rest of the, the shut, yeah, the closure. But. And I, I think, you know, part of, you know, one of the things that we face is that we can't, we can't guarantee risk elimination, but we can at least do risk reduction. So at least cleaning would reduce risks to some degree. So I'm just, my, my only concern is, is finding, so many people have shut down various portions. So um, are we, are, are we saying then that we would, we don't, that long distance learning, if long distance learning does not occur the following week, that if we don't get the waiver Sorry. for it, then we will. We would be willing to extend. We we'd have to, I think, look at bumping that. And and I agree the importance of um, what you said, Michelle, about it's now because now we're going into a new distribution level. Different people have handled them. I also agree with Trustee Holm that you know we're we're trying to do everything in our power to help mitigate this situation because that is the status of what we are in mitigating, and. Um, and also, I mean, it's like you said, I mean, we're also looking at the liability that's putting back onto us if we don't take at least proactive steps, right? That someone could come back and be like, you didn't think about this, you didn't even, you know, we have a responsibility to be thinking and discussing these things and doing everything we can proactively. Um, proactive instead mitigate. of reactive. Yeah, yeah. So I, I agree. I think if it, if it, if it forces the bump of that, then that's just what the situation is going to be, unfortunately. And I think then we have to maybe think old school, you know, back to paper and pens and pencils for a spell, you know, and more packet distribution. We'll have to figure that out. You know, there was a time before every student had a Chromebook in their district. You know, I'm not trying to be archaic. <laughs> so I'm not that old. So, so, Trustee Custom, were we taking a vote, or were we just... I'd ask just for a roll call um, by Eva for basically everything we've discussed here and given the direction to the superintendent um, by every trustee that, yes, I'm agreeing with okay. this direction, since okay. it's not a motion. Okay. I think, I think we're ready. Well, uh, or, what are we ready to do? We agree, just so that of all the direction we've just oh, I, discussed. I just want to say, because I'm getting so many darn texts. People are all saying that they're afraid of people not being trained, you know, for their Chromebooks. It, it says, just, yes, but a tech department employee just posted that she was not trained because she was at a site or something like that. Okay. I, don't know. Okay. I think that was we resolved. Moved, we moved that. that uh, yeah. um, Michelle is going to have look into we'll that. We get um, an outsourced agency to do that. And if it bumps us not being able to start up live online on Monday for our students, then we're going to have to... You know, like I said, get creative, maybe. Google Classroom, packets. Packets, you know. And some students, it's, it's a give and take, right? Because what, what we're trying to do is yeah. also make sure we're creating, an, you know, that equity situation for all of our students. We do have some students that have computers at home, but then we have students who don't. And that's really the issue at hand that we're dealing with, right? And we're trying to make that as equitous as possible across the board. Yeah. So if we have to bump and delay, from next Monday, because we don't have them back from an outsourced agency to clean them, then 
it is what it is. We're, we'll have to, do we bump then the distance learning days or are we able to do something else like with a packet distribution across all K-12? So, Emma, okay. can you read off the, the names? So do you just want me to read out the names of and um, what was discussed in the directive for the... Um, I think we're all pretty clear. Pretty clear. Direction. Okay. I think the superintendent's pretty clear with the, okay. the direction that's been discussed. Okay. Then I'll just um, read out the names. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do? You're saying you're correct. Either, either yes, you support the direction, or no, you don't support the direction. Okay, we ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, Trustee Holm, your decision? I agree. Trustee Osmondson? I agree. Trustee Shocker? I agree. Trustee DeSerpa? In agreement. Trustee Acosta? Yes, I agree with the direction. Trustee Orozco? I agree. President Dodge? I agree with the direction. Um, President Trustee Dodge Jr., can you confirm, um, maybe you and or Dr. Rodriguez, how our next meeting, I mean, is it, um, because I know the city, they've talked about that they may have the city council members come to the city but close the doors and do the meeting, you know, do the live stream of the meeting, not let public in, but they'll take emails and phone calls. Are we looking at that or are we looking at us seven and you and have it being virtual as well. I'm just, a, I'm a little unclear on that. So I've been working with legal counsel on both here and the other. Um, technically still, we have to allow public um, unless we feel that there is imminent danger. So like for example, there wasn't that many people here, so it wasn't um, a big deal. Um, it is, we have to have a requirement of at least four of us in one physical location that we post on, um, that mm -hmm. we post so that people know that they could go to that physical location. I, um, we could and, um, you know, we, we, we all, we can do the, um, we can do the email. We can also do the phone call. The reason, the challenge I was told with the phone call is you have to have a way of people waiting in a queue. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> if you're just calling someone's cell phone, then you technically aren't in adhering to that yeah. because you don't have any, you don't have any queue system. So we currently don't have a system that allows people to wait in a queue. So that's why we on the district's phone system we don't have that. We don't. So um, so the it just comes up um, busy. Gotcha. And so then because of that we just went to the email option only is what we did because um, we couldn't find um, a way to do the phone call and keep people in the same order that they were. So then I would think that by the sounds of it we need to still have the meeting here. I don't even think having it at the city was going to be an option because I think they've, cl they've closed their facilities. So um, to have that meeting here we obviously do the live stream and I think that um, it's, it's public but then maybe we just make the public comment be all email. And you know and then it has to be in within that 24 hour period and that, you know, uh, trusting home, maybe you can send out some of those yeah. ahead of time to your other colleagues uh, uh, so we can read, so you don't have to be burdened with it all. What we will absolutely have to do, if, especially if we have a similar number of emails, is have like public comment in the subject line. Make that clarification. Yes, maybe we can make that clarification in the agenda where it says how the public comment will be handled. That, that could be clarified that in the subject line to yeah. Trustee Home, it has to say public comment. Um, just another point, if all 3,500 employees send an email for public comment, that would equal about 60 hours, even if it, the comment was only down to one minute. So we would be sitting here 60 hours listening to public yeah. comment. I, w okay. In the past, we've kind of grouped comments together, and I don't know. It's I'm just concerned about the number of comments that could be coming in, so maybe we can think about ways to manage Well, that. those comments shouldn't be coming in to Trustee Home until after, number one, the agenda's published, right? 
so it would be that time pe period of what is that Sunday at five to um, or you can do what city to, council to, did Tuesday. they only allowed it um, during this from the start of the meeting until they reached the public comment portion um, and then they shut off emails but we could look at we can ask legal about a time if there's a time frame but that's what they did at the city council meeting there was a, only a certain time period when emails were allowed to um, be submitted um, so that's something to maybe ask legal about i know they just updated more um, clarifications to the brown act with results the coronavirus and they're recommending um, even keeping it under 10 people in a room that are sitting six to seven feet apart from each other during any type of meetings um, especially if there's anyone in uh, uh, that's considered vulnerable in the population of that's coming into that meeting so these are things that we're going to have to take into consideration um, for the, ne the next board meeting and as you mentioned because it just came out it, things may evolve in the next two weeks as well or a week and a half True. as well so there could be a potential that we have to postpone it for a week or something also um, until we have more clues of what's happening with the district. Thank you very much. That concludes our meeting.